Hello friends, this is Fiction Domain. How are you all? So we are back with an interesting movie on what if Naruto become a Lucifer and had nine-tailed power. But before we start, if you want more stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. Lucifer was pissed, he was beyond pissed, and all of hell and Silver City knew it. Why might do you ask? Well just five hours ago Lucifer was living his new life as Minato Morning Star Namikas. Alongside his beautiful wife Kashina Yuzumaki Namikas. It was a special day for the couple for it was the day that their son was going to be born. Lucifer was shocked the day his beautiful bride told him that she was carrying his child. For every time he was on earth no woman was able to give him a child, no matter how many times he had tried. But, Kashina was special from all the other women. She was a Jinchuriki. She was the Jinchuriki to the most powerful of the tailed beast. The Kyubi no Yoko or Kyubi no Kitsune. For the demon fox held nine tails as was the most powerful out of his siblings. That night of October 10th Minato and Kashina welcomed to the world a little boy. To everyone's amazement had black hair with red mixed into it and the most heavenly blue eyes that anyone had ever seen. But the happy family's enjoyment was cut short when an Anbu came flying through the door and a masked man walked into the safe house. With just a blink of an eye the man was before Kashina and ripping the baby from her hands and holding him upside down by his feet and holding a kunai to the crying baby's neck. Lenato's eyes flashed crimson as his only child was being threatened before him. Before Lucifer Morning Star. Return my son. He demanded his voice taking on an icy edge to it. The man smirked behind his mask. You will give me what I want Morning Star or else this child will take your place. His voice dripping with venom as he spoke. As the fox rushed to heal Kashina. Said woman was slowly leaking out her chakra chains to bind the man and get her son back. Her crimson chains slithered up the side of the man as Minato made to rush him. As the chains finished their job and wrapped around the man. Minato reached for his son. But not before the kunai cut the boy on his cheek. The baby was now crying as blood rolled down his cheek. Minato pulled his son away and flashed stepped to another safe house where the third and his wife awaited the happy family. Minato appeared before him. My family has been attacked. Please take Naruto and keep him safe. He said as he vanished once more. Tsuritobi turned to his wife. She nodded her head to him as he vanished in a swirl of leaves. Ishina was still too weak as the masked man was able to overpower her and now was pulling the Kayubi from her belly. He smirked as his single crimson eye looked down at her. There is nothing you nor your foolish husband can do to stop me. But I can only leave you with a parting gift. One that I'm sure you'll both enjoy. He pulled a kunai out of his robe and drove it into her stomach and twisting it for extra majors. Without your little fox. You will not survive from this. He laughed as he went after his prize and placed the Kayubi into a Jinjutsu. Now my pet. Burn this village to the ground. Laugh the masked man as his mask was impacted by a fist and sent him flying off the Kayubi and into a store where civilians hid from the rampaging beast. You made a grave mistake in attacking my family and another for hurting my child. I will end you. Growled Minato as his eyes glowed a soft crimson. Where once his gentle blue eyes held love and happiness. Now was the promise of death and pain. I shall not forgive your transgression to my family and village. He held two tri-prong kunai in his hands as flames licked around the blades. The man's single eye widens from fear for he could see the fourth Hokage's face turn into a demon as black wings appeared behind him. He pushed himself off the ground and charged the man. That Jinjutsu doesn't frighten me. He yelled as a large metal fan appeared in his hands. Bonato laughed as he slashed at the man before him. You're mistaking what is my true face for a Jinjutsu. Minato leaned in close to the man as his mouth was next to the man's ear. Why would I Lucifer Morning Star the devil need to use a Jinjutsu on my true face? The man pushed off Minato. El Lucifer. How? Stammered the man as his crimson eye held fear. Bonato smirked as he drove one of his flaming kunai into the left side of the man. The flames began burning his robe. This will not be the end of this, for my pet is destroying your village. He said as he vanished into a black hole. Bastard. Growled Minato as he left the building to see more than half of Konoha in flames as civilian and shinobi alike ran and fought back. Many lay dead on the ground. Without thinking Minato jumped onto the Kayubi's head and was gone with seconds. As Minato Flash stepped the beast away. The Jinjutsu that he was under began to fade. Fucking Madara. I'm going to kill that bastard. Growled out the Kayubi as he looked around him and saw Kashina bleeding on the ground next to her was her husband holding her tight. Varama please return to me. Said Kashina as she coughed up blood. Varama looked down at his former host. He slowly shakes his head. Child you would only die taking me back into you. If you don't then you'll be hunted again and resealed into someone who doesn't care and would only hurt you cried Kashina as she slowly pushed herself up. Then seal me within your son. 
but make it to the point I am able to move freely out of his seal to protect and train him. Said Kurama as he knew she wasn't long for this world and something strange about her husband told him he wouldn't be here for much longer. Bishina cried as Minato vanished to bring their child to the Kayubi and make the child the new Jinchuriki of the Kayubi. As Minato reappeared, he got the seal ready and went through the hand signs. As he yelled sealing jutsu a man with silver hair appeared next to him. Lucifer it is time to return my son. You have had your fun and for this seal to work you need my blessing, for it is one of three heavenly seals needed to seal Kurama whole and keep the darkness away from young Naruto's heart as well as Kurama's. Lucifer looked at his father with rage written across his face. I will not leave my son. He growled out. God smiled. He will not be alone. He will have Kurama here to raise and protect him as well we will help him from the shadows. He told his son. But, father. I am still strong and able to fight. I can be here for him as well. Said Lucifer as he glared darkly at his father. I'm afraid not Lucifer. Something has happened in hell and the balance is off. The dead are returning to life and the reapers are not able to handle things and the ones you left to watch things over have failed. Said God as he placed a hand on his son's shoulder. Lucifer sighed as he knew that if he didn't return. Things would only get worse in the land of the living and if he wanted any type of future for his son. Then he was going to have to leave him. He looked at his father. Fine but I want my wife with me in the afterlife. She is my angel of light. God nodded his head and the seal was finished and Kurama came out of the seal with a silver choker on his neck and it was in a human form. He looked like Kishina. If she was a male. Kishina held her son one last time and kissed him. I love you Naruto Morning Star Yuzumaki Namikas. Grow up to be a good man like your father and strong like me. She looked up at Kurama. Please keep him safe. She said with tears as the light from her eyes slowly began to fade. Minato took his son from his wife and held the boy for a while. Naruto. I am sorry I will not be around for when you need me the most. I am sorry for forsaking you to this life of a Jinchuriki and most of all I am sorry for everything that is to come. He said as tears rolled down his cheeks and he kissed his son for the very last time. Kurama walked up to the man and looked at him. So. Lucifer you did break out of hell again. He said with a knowing smirk. Don't worry. I'll take care of the kid. He told him. Be sure to protect him Kurama or I will rain down hell on your ass. Said Lucifer as he turned to his father. God nodded his head as several scrolls appeared before Kurama. You will need these for his training. As well I had fixed Minato's and Kishina's will. So, you will be able to raise the child. He told Kurama as said fox man nodded his head. Two blood clones of Minato and Kishina took their place. As Minato had to fake his death and return to hell and long his side was, he beloved wife that God had made into an angel for his son. For he knew the loneliness Lucifer so longed for to end and it had when he had met this very special woman. Also, it didn't hurt that Kishina kind of scared his son. The third and Jureya had finally arrived to find the two new parents dead and a strange man that could pass as Kishina's twin brother holding their child. Who are you? Demand Suratobi as Jureya checked to see if the two were still alive. Karama looked at the two monkeys and down at the baby that was now sleeping. I am Kishina's twin brother. He told them. We didn't know she had a brother. Said Jureya as he narrowed his eyes at Karama. I have the letter she sent me. Said Karama as he pulled a letter from his pocket and handed it over to the old man. Dear baby brother. I am so glad at receiving the letter from you about a month ago. I'm happy that you did make it out of the village alive before it fell. I have missed you so much and I hope you get here before my son is born. That's right. You're going to be an uncle and I know I'm going to need your help once the baby comes. For Minato is still so clueless and doesn't have the slightest idea on what to do when the baby is here. But I must go. I need to finish the baby's room and get a room set up for you. Once you get here just come to the Yuzumaki estate and all will be ready. Love your big sister Kishina. As you can tell that is my sister handwriting and as in Yuzumaki, I am entitled to raise her son and my nephew as well, I am entitled to all Yuzumaki land and deeds till Naruto is old enough to take over as head of both Yuzumaki and Namika's clans. That is if he truly wants to. Said Kurama as he looked at both men. As Jiraiya was about to say something Siratobi raised his hand to stop him. Fine we will escort you to their home. But in the morning we will be going over their wills. For Jiraiya and Tsunade had been named the boy's godparents the second Kishina and Minato knew she was going to have a baby. He told Kurama. Kurama raised a crimson eyebrow to this. I don't give a damn. I am his only family and I will do all in my power to keep him safe and well cared for. He told the two men with anger lacing his voice. Jiraiya glared at him. I don't give a damn you're Kishina's brother. I will be in the boy's life as well as Tsunade. He said as he turns to leave. He needed to go find the woman and tell her what had happened and he best do it quickly. Hell. Lucifer began looking in the files for one name. Madara Che. 
Maze walked into Lucifer's office and saw three other Lucifers working and looking at files and scrolls. Behind her was Kashina. Maze had taken it upon herself to give the woman a makeover, and Kashina was having a little issue with wearing a tight leather pencil skirt with a black C though top with a black bra. Her crimson locks pulled back into a ponytail. Found the file on Madara. Said Maze as she placed it before Lucifer. He looked up at her. Where in bloody hell was it? Asked Lucifer as he saw that written across it. Missing. Ashina walked up to her husband and placed a hand of his shoulder. Someone must have let him out or something. Lucifer looked at her and over to Maze. Where is the demon that was keeping watch on him? He asked. Maze murked. The old bastard killed her. He tricked her into loving him and then killed her. Ashina my love. We have a lot of work to do and not enough time. For Madara has ranted to others that he was going to bring the end of the elemental nations and he needs all the tail beasts to do it. Said Lucifer as he saw the fear in his wife's eyes. What do you need of me? Asked Kashina. Heaven and hell wasn't going to stop her from helping her son. Lucifer smirked. I need you to help Maze train a couple demons and angels that I would be sending to earth to help out. I will deal with my father about getting a few angels. He told his wife as she nodded her head. Maze watched on as she wonders what made this woman so special and different from all the others. Not even that detective was able to bring a change into Lucifer, and that woman was created by God just for him. Lucifer walked into Silver City as he was flanked by his wife Kashina and his right-hand demon Maze. Hello father. We need to talk. He said as he stopped before his father as the others stopped what they had been doing and looked at their troublemaking brother before them all. God smiled down at his son. What brings you back to Silver City my son? He asked with an all-knowing smile. I am here to speak to you about something we talked about. Said Lucifer as he smirked back as he knew his father was playing the fool. Maze and Kashina looked at all the angels gathered around their father. Maze glared at her former lover. As Kashina looked at the two with questionable eyes. Maze just shook her head at the crimson hair woman as both turned back to look at Lucifer. I know Lucifer. You are here for the angels that will be protecting your son as well as helping in his growth as a shinobi. Said God as he smiled at his son. The others looked at their father with amazement. As gasps could be heard all around. Amanadiel stepped forth. What is the meaning of this Lucifer? He asked his brother. Lucifer looked over at his brother and smirked. Brother I'm surprised father hasn't informed everyone here. That as of tonight, I am a father and I had to leave my son alone on earth for some assholes have fucked up while I was away. He told everyone. The father asked a shocked Amanadiel as he studied his brother. Vishina stepped forth. We were forced to leave our son behind for Madara Chaha attacked us after I gave birth to our son. She told them. Whispers could be heard from all around them. I held Karama within me. I was his Jinchuriki. The Jinchuriki of the Kayubi no Yoko or Kayubi no Kitsune to others. He wanted the fox and waited till I was at my weakest point. Said Kashina as Maze looked at her with surprise. Lucifer nor Kashina never told anyone once they had appeared in hell. All Lucifer wanted was the filer scroll on Madara Chaha. I thought Madara Chaha was locked away in the deepest part of hell. Said Amanadiel as he turns to look back at his father. Father is this true? Yes, it is my son. Said God. Then I will go and help my nephew. Said Amanadiel as he looked at his other brothers and sisters. Azrael stepped forth. I want to help as well. She told her father as she stood next to her brother Amanadiel. Uriel appeared from behind his brother and sister. I shall go as well. For you would need to keep an eye on things. He said with a smirk. Very well. You three would go and be the guides from heaven as Lucifer will have three from hell as well to help. I am sure Maze will be the leader of the pack said God. Lucifer smirked. Yes, Maze will be there to make sure everything goes as planned. As well everyone will be training with Maze and my wife Kashina. For none of you are able to use Chakra and Maze has been using it for a very long time. He told the others. Maze smirked at everyone. I hope you three are ready to be my bitches. She told them as she turns to leave Silver City. She was getting tired of the place. If she had to be anywhere, she would like to be back in LA hanging out at Lux with her old friends. The three looked to their father for his approval to leave with their troublesome brother. God nodded his head to his children as they followed after Lucifer and his wife Kashina. The gates of Silver City once more closed to the fallen one. Earth. Hirama Yuzumaki stood before the Shinobi Council as Saratobi had ordered the civilian council to leave. Many of the civilian councilmen complained about this unfair treatment of them. But, Kurama had refused to speak while they were there. He felt that it's Shinobi business and those fools had no right to be there whatsoever. I do not see why this foreigner is getting his way. Whine one pink hair banshee as she was pushed out of the council chambers by an Anbu wearing an Inu mask. Bam banshee. Always putting her nose where it doesn't belong. Thought Karama as he glared at the retreating form of her and the others. 
Garama held a small bundle in his arms as he looked over at the shinobi side. Tsunade was sitting in her family seat. But by the looks of her. She was nursing a hangover from the night before. He looked over to the third Hokage and saw Jiraiya standing behind the old man. I am Kurama Yuzumaki and the twin brother of one Kashina Yuzumaki Namikas. I arrived in the village during the fight with the Kayubi and was entrusted by her and her husband Minato Namikas to watch over and raise their only son Naruto Morning Star Yuzumaki Namikas. Said Kurama as he was hearing whispers from the people. Tsunade opened her eyes and looked down at the man. You are the last of the main Yuzumaki family? She asked him. Yes, I am. Kashina had feared me dead with the others of our village after the attack that took our home forever away from us. Said Kurama as he just wanted to get this over with. What other villages had you been to? Asked Jiraiya as none of his spy network knew of this man before him. I have been only to the small fishing villages in my travels. With my crimson hair it would not be wise for me to be at any of the major villages or villages close to them, for in Yuzumaki would be very valuable to the wrong people. We are seal masters after all, and we have very interesting bloodlines. Said Kurama as he looked Jiraiya dead in the eyes. Everyone nodded their heads. They remembered when Kashina was almost kidnapped by Kumo. It wouldn't end well for Kurama if he was caught and turned into breeding stock. Only few people knew Kashina was the Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails. What of the fox? What happened to him? Asked Saratobi as he wanted to know. Kurama sighed as he looked down at the baby in his arms. He has been forsaken as the new Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails. That is why I refuse to speak of this in front of those fools on the civilian council for the boy is hero and should be treated as one and not seen as the demon he holds. He told them as he glared at the elders behind the old hokage. I still worry about telling you for I do not trust those old fools behind you Lord Third. The elders glared at the crimson hair man. Who is he to treat us like commoners? Thought the old fools. What they didn't know was soon their judgment would be coming for them. Like the old saying goes you reap what you sow, and they had done a lot of shady dealings in the past behind their hokages' backs. I understand your worry and fears Kurama-san. But, I assure you. What is said here will not leave these walls. Said Saratobi as he smiled at the man before him. I hope you are right about that. For if anyone finds out about this child holding the mightiest of all Bidjuus. There will be hell to pay. Said Kurama as his crimson eyes harden and a crimson aura surround his whole body. Tsunade laughed as she looked at the man down before her and to her sensei. He has a point. If word ever got out about this. We will know someone in this very room has loose lips and I will make their lives a living hell. She said as she also glared at the elders. Troublesome. She does have a point and we hear a shinobi no lose lip sync ships and it would place our village in danger with any of our enemies. Said Shikaku Nara. That is true. Since the attack T and I has been very busy with spies that have been caught coming into the village. We do not need more from within our own very walls. Said Inoichi. The other heads of the clans nodded their heads. For right now their village was at its weakest it had ever been and their current Jinchuriki was no use to them whatsoever. For what could a newborn do and for that infant's uncle wouldn't do anything to help this village for it wasn't his true home and he was only there for that child. That child alone. Barama looked over the clan heads and sighed. I would fight for this village. Do not forget, my family along with the Senjus and Ichihas helped build this village. If my late aunt Mido meant nothing to you people whatsoever. He told them. Tsunade narrowed her eyes at the man. She knew Kashina was her grandmother's niece and her cousin. Mummers could be heard as they talked amongst themselves. They knew he spoke the truth and there wasn't anything they could tell him. For Kanoha was the sister village to the whirlpool. Then when Naruto is older. I want you to enlist as a shinobi of this village. Said Siratobi as he looked down at Kurama. Kurama just smirked. Good luck with it you old fool. He thought to himself. Soon the others will be here and they wouldn't know what hit them. During this entire time Shikaku watched Kurama with lazy eyes. He knew this man before him was up to something. But he didn't know what and the strange feeling he was getting from him was leaving him unsettling feeling within his stomach. Hell. Lucifer walked back into his office as the others followed behind him. Who will you be sending from here? Asked Kashina as she wished she could return to her son. But it wouldn't be good for the dead to return to the living once more. Lucifer looked up at his wife. He let out a sigh. I haven't given it any thought so far. I know I couldn't entrust our son to many of the demons here. Yes, they are loyal to me in hell. But would that loyalty change once they leave to go to earth? He questioned as they looked at everyone in the room. Then why not send one of the souls we have here that you have befriend throughout the years? Suggested Maze. She could find a few souls that would enjoy returning to Earth. Lucifer sat down thinking about it. That could work. He said as he pulled a few files from his desk as his clones worked on the stack of files littering the whole office. Um Lucy how are there three more of you in here? Asked Aminadiel as the others nodded their heads. They are just shadow clones. 
physical clones of the person who uses the jutsu. Said Kashina as she looks at the others as if it wasn't anything major. Shadow clones. Asked Azrael as she walked up to one of the clones and touched it. You do know it is annoying alright? Asked Lucifer clone one. She jumped back frightened as she didn't expect it to speak and feel so real. It's real. She gasped out. What did you expect to put your hand right through me? Asked the same shadow clone. Azrael nodded her head to the clone's question. For this is something she had never seen in her life. Maze walks up to the clone and pulls a kunai from her back pocket and stabs it. The clone goes wide eye and goes up in a poof of smoke. As Lucifer glares at Maze. See one good fatal hit and it's gone. She told the others. Damn it Maze that bloody hurt. Said Lucifer as he makes another clone to replace the one that Maze took out. One is able to make clones like these with the use of chakra and that is something we need to waken in the three of you. Said Kashina as she walks up to the others. So, be warned it is painful. Uriel looks down at the crimson hair woman. Why are you with my brother? He asked. This was something that had been bothering him for a while. Why would anyone willingly stay with Lucifer? Ashina stopped as she turned around and looked at Uriel. Why do you ask? She asked him with confusion written on her face. What would make you fall in love with Lucifer? Even after you found out he is Satan you are still by his side and I want to know why. Said Uriel as he looked the crimson hair woman over. Ashina looked over at Lucifer and back at his siblings. She sighed as she was starting to feel extremely tired now. I fell in love with him during my time in Kanoha. But what really made me fall in love with him was the night I was kidnapped and he followed after us and saved my life. For several shinobi from Kumo had taken me and had planned to turn me into breeding stock. For in Yuzumaki was very valuable in the shinobi world. Said Kashina. After that he and I grew close. We fell in love with each other. When I told him that I was a Jinchuriki, he didn't judge me. He was open to me and told me the truth and who he was and why he was on earth. That he needed a break from hell and wanted to try to have a life without all the darkness. Said Kashina as she walked around Lucifer's desk and leaned down and kissed the man. Lucifer smiled as he kissed her back. She is special to me. Someone who never turned their back on me and welcomed me into her life with open arms and never once did she question anything I did. For she knew I did it to keep her and those I care for safe. He told the others. You found love and now you are in this mess with a madman on the loose and an innocent child cared for by a demon. Asked Aminadiel. Well if you put it that way. Then yes. Said Lucifer as he smirked at his brother. Have you thought about sending Chloe up to earth as one of the boy's watchers? Asked Maze as she was grinning now. Lucifer looked at Maze for a moment. I don't know. You know her soul is up in Silver City. I could send Officer Douch. But he still isn't talking to me. He told Maze as she smirked at her boss. He would be fun to send back to Earth. Said Maze as she thought about how the man would react to that fact the world had changed. Too bad I couldn't send Trixie. That child would love it there. She did always like playing ninja with you Maze. Said Lucifer as he smirked. That little human was always so much fun to play with. I was shocked that she was willing to come to hell when she passed away. Said Maze as she grinned. As if she knew they were talking about her. Trixie walked into Lucifer's office. Hello Lucifer. Ashina looked wide-eyed at the little girl standing at the office door. She is just a child. She said with surprise in her voice. Trixie smirked at the crimson hair woman. No, I'm a grown-up. It's just more fun moving around here as a child. She told the crimson hair woman. Just then Trixie took her adult form. She stood at 5'10 with long black hair that was up in twin pigtails as it touched the ground. Her dark eyes had a beautiful glow to them. She smiled at Kashina. Ah. Trixie you are still the little scamp as always. Said Lucifer as he smirked at her. Well what can I say? I felt my ears ring and that only happens when you and Maze are talking about me. So, I had to come and find out what was going on. All I heard was something about playing ninja. Said Trixie as she smirked. I know I always like her. My favorite little human. Said Maze as she grinned at the girl. Trixie it is good to see you once more. Said Aminadiel as he walked up to the girl and hugged her. It's good to see you are well Aminadiel. But what brings you three from Silver City? Asked Trixie. Also, how's my mom doing by the way? She asked as they broke the hug. She is doing well. But we are here for Lucifer had a child and we are going to be trained to use chakra so we can move more freely in this new age of shinobi. Said Aminadiel. Trixie's eyes lit up at hearing about shinobi. For real? I would love to go and play ninja and meet your son Lucifer. She told him as her eyes sparkled. Maze walked up to Trixie and hung her arm around the girl's neck. Well I guess it was a good thing that you had been training with me on learning how to use chakra. She asked the girl. Hell yeah. It was totally worth it. Said Trixie as she hugged Maze. Lucifer smirked. Leave it to you Maze to always having a backup plan for me. 
this will make it a lot easier with three of us to teach the four others on how to use chakra and learn their jutsu style. Said Kashina as she smirked at the girl. Hey, Lucy, who's the lady? Asked Trixie as she looked at Kashina. Lucifer smirked as he pulled Kashina into his lap. She is my beautiful bride and the mother of my son. He told Trixie as Kashina wrapped her arms around Lucifer's neck. Wow. About damn time you found true love. Said Trixie as she smirked at the two. So, who will be the final member of this team? Asked Uriel as he looked at the others. Tsukumo stumbled into the doorway of Lucifer's office. He held a bottle of sake in his right hand as he looked at everyone in the room with a drunken smirk. Send me. He told everyone. Lucifer arched an eyebrow to this. Why would I send an old drunker like you to watch over my son? He asked. Tsukumo leaned against the doorframe. Think of it as a thank you and a payback for caring for my son after my untimely death. He told Lucifer. Tsukumo, you took your own life. Something I don't think you should have done. Said Kashina as she frowned at the silver hair man. Tsukumo smirked at Kashina. I didn't commit suicide. Danzo jumped me with his little root anbu and hung me. Telling me it was for the good of the village for I was too weak and he couldn't have me tainting the others with my weakness. He told her. That bastard. He took you from Kakashi-kun and sent that boy down a very dark path and he closed himself up to all those around him. But it took the death of his teammate to get him to open up to the others. If just a little. Said Kashina as she was tearing up. Tsukumo tightened his hand around the neck of the sake bottle as it shuttled into a million pieces. I want to go back and kill that bastard for what he has done to my family. He told Lucifer. Fine. But you will not be able to return the way you are now. You will have to change your appearance. For I do not know how it would affect Kakashi at this moment. For we were the last of the family he had. Said Lucifer as he looked at his old friend. Tsukumo smirked as he stood straight. I guess it was a good thing I had become a demon. He said as his silver hair turned black and his black eyes took on a silver color to them. His face become more fuller from how it was once narrow. Even his build changed a little from a lean body of a swimmer. He became a little stockier. But he never gave up any of his speed or flexibility. Then it appears my team is all set to get these little angels ready for what is to happen next. Said Maze as she grinned even more. Very well Maze. Take them and have your fun. I will send my wife to help you soon. Said Lucifer. Maze nodded her head as she turns to the others and gave them a look. Let's go. She said as she left the building with the others following behind her. Do you really think your siblings will be able to take care of our son? Asked Kashina as she laid her head on his shoulder. Lucifer wrapped her into his arms. With you and the others. I am sure they will do fine. Said Lucifer. He knew she was worried about them messing everything up and placing Naruto and Karama in more danger. But with Maze, Sakumo, and Trixie things will go fine. Those three he could trust more than the other three. Earth. Hirama glared at Tsunade as she was standing in his way. What do you want blasted woman? I need to get Naruto fed and you just want to be in the way. He growled out. Tsunade narrowed her eyes at the man. I want to be here to help care for my godson. I know Jurei will be useless during this point of the boy's life and this would also free you up to take on missions for the village. She told him with a smirk. I do not think so. I will not have you getting in my way and placing the boy in danger. You are a drunk and a horrible gambler. You need to clean yourself up first before I will even think about allowing you to help me with my nephew. Till then you will stay out of my way. Said Kurama as he pushed past her and entered his home as a shadow clone followed behind him with all the supplies needed for baby Naruto. He knew Kashina had everything already. But he felt it would be good to get a little extra for one never knew if it would come in handy while all the shops are closed. Tsunade stood there in shock for the way the man had talked to her. When she turns to follow after him and give him a piece of her mind. The door was slammed shut into her face and Seal appeared before her. It was blocking her from coming in. Until you are clean and sober. You will not be entering this house. Said Karama as his voice carried past the door. Sunaid glared at the closed door and turned to walk away. At the gate stood Jiraiya. So, he wants you to clean up your act before he allows you around their son. He asked with a smirk. Sunaid glared at him. I'm pretty sure he will be telling you the same thing. So, I wouldn't be acting so high and mighty yourself. She told him with a smirk as Jiri's face contorted into a frown. I don't think he would be doing that to me. I am a god among men. Said Jiraiya with a cocky grin. As the two San and spoke someone appeared before the two. That also goes for you as well dirty old man. For when it comes time for you to train my nephew. You will not be dumping him on others or running off to do that research of yours that you claim to be so proud of. Said Kurama as he glared at the old pervert before him. What? Yelled Jiraiya in shock. Why would you do something so horrible to all of mankind? He cried. I don't give a damn. You are worthless to the boy once he is older. There is a time and a place for your BS. 
So, if you want to be in the boy's life you will also clean up your act and do what is right to stand next to this boy. For once the others show. They will leave you two in the dust. Said Kurama as he turned to leave the two Sanin to their very own thoughts. Both Sanin stood there stunned in their very own thoughts, as well as processing his very words of others to coming to be in the boy's life. For if they wanted anything to do with their godson. Then they will have to do whatever it will take to make things easier for their last remaining family. It had been three years since the Kyubi attack. Three long years with Kurama fighting to get Tsune to open her eyes and change her life. As well as getting Jiraiya to change his ways. The Toad Sage was being seen more with respect within the village walls, and less women feared going to the hot springs. But what he did when he wasn't in the village was left to his own discretion. The day Kurama felt it was the right time to begin to train Naruto in using his chakra and gain some type of control. Alright kid. We are going to be working on tree walking. You have done well with the leaf balancing. So now it's time to step it up. Once you get tree walking down. I will make you add leaves all around your body. For Uzumakis have larger than normal chakra pool as well you are special and have another type of chakra within you. Said Kurama as he walked around the small black red hair boy. Naruto's blue eyes never leaving the man. Really? He asked as he eyes sparkle. You're going to teach me how to walk up a tree. He was bouncing around the training field by this point and Kurama was being to wonder if there was something wrong with the kid for he had never seen a child so hyper. But stopped when he remembered Kashina when she was little, and that girl was bouncing off walls and buildings. So, Naruto was still a little calmer than his mother. Yeah, I am. Now sit down and watch me. Ordered Kurama as he focused chakra to the soles of his feet. He slowly took one step up the tree and then another. As he walked up the tree Naruto's eyes had grown to the size of dinner plates. Wow that is amazing. He yelled as he jumped to his feet and ran up to the tree looking up at his uncle. Kurama smiled down at his nephew. This will help you in the future. He said as he was now hanging upside down. Naruto closed his eyes and focused his chakra at his feet. Taking a deep breath, he took a step forth. It stuck. So, he took another, and it stuck as well. But then as he took his third step his chakra surged, and he fell flat on his back. Opening his eyes, he looked up at his uncle. Tears had slowly began to well up on the corner of his eyes. He had fallen on a rock and it was stabbing into his side. Hell. About time you worthless fools have got this all down. Said Maze as she though her hands up in the air. Trixie giggled from her spot on top of Sakumo's shoulders. All Maze don't get too upset. They are like babies learning how to walk. She told the older demoness. Sakumo grinned as he looked up at Trixie. Come now my little angel. You shouldn't be making fun of Maze here. He said as he grinned. Maze glared at the two and turned back to the three frightened angels. We will be leaving as soon as we report to Lucifer. She told them as she walked to the entryway but stopped and turned back to them. Get your shit and be ready to leave within an hour. With that she was gone. Tsukumo looked up at Trixie grinning. Those ceiling scrolls we packed are in my pouch. So, we are all set to leave now. He told the young demoness on his shoulder. Yeah, but I think Maze wants to pack all her toys. Said Trixie with a devilish smirk. He nodded his head and looked over at the others. Go to your rooms and get dressed. We have placed shinobi outfits for my home village for you three, and Lucy should have our paperwork all in line for us. Said Sakumo as he and Trixie left the room and went to Lucifer's office. Lucifer's office. Maze stormed into Lucifer's office as the door slammed into one of his shadow clones, as he was sitting at his desk as he talked with his wife. As Kashina sat on top of his desk. They both looked up and Lucifer frowned at Maze. What's the matter Maze? Asked Lucifer. Kashina just raised a crimson eyebrow looking at the demoness. Sitting on her lap was a large scroll that had Naruto written across it. Maze followed his side and smirked. I see you have our cover story ready as well. She said as he looked over at the scroll next to Kashina. She raised an onyx eyebrow at the crimson hair woman. After running that village. I know all the BS you will have to go through when you go to the front gates. Said Lucifer as he sighed and looked down at the scrolls. The green scroll for the gate guards about a bogus mission with true information about you being in Kumo gathering information on the two tails and eight tails. The crimson scroll goes to the Hokage along with the green scroll after the gate guards look it over. He told her. What of the blue scroll? Asked Maze as she looked down at it. Kashina smirked at it. That one goes to Kurama. She told Maze as Lucifer smirked at her. Yes, Kurama will need this scroll. Also, it holds several secrets about the village and about his siblings. Said Lucifer as he grinned. Just be ready when Kurama will go to war with the council. Maze raised her onyx eyebrow even higher. Why would he go to war with the council? She asked not knowing if she wanted to know or if she would have fun taking part raising a little hell. Don't worry about it for now. He will gather what he needs for the years to come. But, keep fucking Danzo away from my son. 
For that bastard wants to turn him into a mindless weapon to only serve him and no one else. Said Kashina as she frowned at that thought. Maze nodded her head to this. I will never allow him near our little prince. Said Maze as she grinned. This just means I'm going to be having fun while I'm there. Lucifer grinned at her. You should meet Ibiki and the others. They will love you. He told Maze. Alright, I'll look the man up. But I am here to report that the angels are finally ready for this damn thing. Said Maze. About damn time. They took three human years and three thousand thousand hell years getting everything down. I was slowly beginning to believe that they will never learn anything, and I was going to go up to heaven myself and get Shinobi to come and help with a lot of the Shinobi here in hell to help them or even replace them. Said Kashina a little annoyed with the angels. Lucifer smirked at his crazy wife. Just get them and hurry up and get to the village. He told Maze as she took everything and sealed away Naruto's and Karama's scrolls and put the others away. Very well. See you guy later. Said Maze as she left the office. I hope everything goes well. Said Kashina as she looked back at Lucifer. So, do it. I hope those three fools can handle themselves. I'm not worried about Maze and the others for they know how to handle themselves. But my siblings are just a bunch of morons. Said Lucifer with a sigh. Garama sat at the dining room table smiling at Naruto as he played with his slice of birthday cake. Tsunade sat across from Naruto with a smile on her own face as Jiraiya had Ma and Pa sitting on his shoulders watching the young tadpole. Naruto smiles and giggles as he takes a handful of cake into his mouth as he smiled looking up at Karama. Rama. He said his cake flow from his swinging hand. Yes Naru? He asked with his own smile. Milk please. Asked Naruto as he saw his small sippy cup. Karama chuckled as he helps Naruto drink some milk. He is growing fast. Said Ma as she smiles down at the little boy. But he is Ma. Soon he will become our summoner as his father was once. Said Pa with a smile. Gureya just nodded his head as he listens to the two toads talk. He looks so much like both his parents. He thought to himself. Village gate. At the village gate Maze and the others walked up with black hoods pulled up. She looked at the Hayuga and Nara that sat there in silence. State your business. Said the stolid Hayuga. Maze pulled her hood back and glared at the pale-eyed man. We are returning form a long s rank mission. She told them as she tossed them a small scroll. The Hayuga caught the scroll and looked it over and turned to the sign-out log and found the team and signed them back all in. Hokage-sama will be accepting your group. He said as he glared at Maze. Maze winked and blow the man a kiss as she turned to the others. Come on let's head to see the old man. She told them as they all walked into the village. A small group made their way though the village streets as many looked around. The angels watched the villagers. As the demons just smirked as they watched a few pass them. After a few minutes they had made it to the center of the village and there was a large tower before them. This was the Hokage Tower. They entered the building and made their way up the stairs. Before them was a young woman siding at a desk before a large double oak door to her left. May I help you? She asked. We are here to see Hokage Sama. Said Maze as she glared at the woman before her. I'm sorry but Hokage-sama is busy. Said the woman with a smirk. Maze arched her eyebrow at the stupid woman. The Hokage needs to see us. For we have returned from SS rank mission and anything you say doesn't mean shit to me. She told the woman. The woman glared back at Maze. I don't give a damn. You're not getting in to see him. She growled out. That was her biggest mistake she had ever made. The body flow thought the double doors as Maze is growling and holding one of her many knives. Bitch. You will not be stopping me from seeing Hokage-sama. She growled out at the fallen woman as said woman slowly pulled herself up into a sitting position. Tsuritobi sat there smoking his pipe looking over a stack of paper at the sense before him. Clearing his throat, he looks at them. What is going on here? He questions the two women as the others stand at the door as Maze was getting ready to attack once more. Okajama. We have returned from our long-term mission and we have gathered information that not even Jiraiya has even caught wind of. Said Trixie as she grins at the man and pulls out the scroll from Maze's bag and hands it to the old man. Tsuritobi took the scroll and opened it and looked it over, and his eyebrows have raised even higher as there was information for Akatsuki. A group that was slowly building with S-rank criminals and one of the reported members is was Madara Che. A chill ran down the old man's body. He looked over at Maze. Maze that is enough. Tell me how you got this information. Demanded Tsuritobi. Maze stopped her slow stalk and looked over at the man. A man claiming to be Madara approached out little group and asked if we would like to join his little group of criminals. I questioned him about what the goal was and he told us that he was going after the tail beast. That meaning my so-to-be sister-in-law is in danger. She told the old man as a frown married his face. But a deep sigh he looked at the small group. I hate to inform you. But your brother and his wife died three years ago. He said as he raised his hand to stop anyone from talking. 
Their son is still alive and is being raised by Kishina-chan's brother Kurama. But I will feel much better with you there with him. Making sure that young Naruto will grow up a loyal ninja to our village. He said with a sad smile. They looked at each other and nodded their heads. Where are they staying? Asked Maze as she already knew, but she had to play the fool and worried sister of the late 4th Hokage. They are staying at the Yuzumaki compound. Said Siratobi as he dismissed them all. Twelve years later. It has been 15 years since the Kayubi attack and the birth of young Naruto. Said teenager was standing in the middle of the training field of his family compound. He was standing there panting heavily as he was glaring at a young girl before him. Hama chan You can do better than this. Said Trixie as she taunted him. Naruto closed his eyes as two wings sprouted out of his back. One black and one's white. He cupped his hands together and a golden glow was coming from his hands. Heavenly starlight. Said Naruto as a wave of golden star shot from his hands. He had a strange bloodline that he didn't need to do hand signs for his attacks. But that was just the tip of the iceberg. Trixie's eyes widened as the wings had popped out of his back. She turned her head to look at Aminadiel who was looking at the boy with wide eyed as well. How can this be? He questions as he walked over to the boy. Naruto fell on his ass as he felt a weird weight on his back. What is happening and why are you guys looking at me that way? He asked. Just then Aminadiel unsealed his own wings for Naruto to see them. Naruto looked at his uncle with wide eyes as well. There was wings behind the man. Naruto you have somehow managed to awaken your angel devil blood. He said with shock laced voice. Naruto felt behind him and felt his wings. What the hell am I going to do now? He asked in shock of what happened. We will train you to use them. Nothing has changed. Said Aminadiel. Naruto nodded his head to this. Sakumo walked over to them as he held the shadow clone of Naruto with wings as well. It appears they all sprouted wings like the original. He said as he looked at the boy. Tsukumo sensei why didn't you let my clone pop? Asked Naruto as he saw the clone was passed out from his training. That would have overloaded you even more than if I did allow him to. Said Tsukumo as he studied Naruto. Naruto nodded his head to this as he falls backwards. His wings still out and behind now under him. This is too much. My father is truly Lucifer Morning Star, the fallen angel who is the king of hell, and my mother chose to go with him after she died. He said. Stop your bitching. You have class in 30 minutes and today is the big day. Said Maze as she stepped out of the shadows. She had to attend a council meeting along with Kurama, for they are the respected clans. For Naruto need to be a chunin to attend them, and he was just going to finish his time at the academy. Kurama followed behind her looking pissed off. Those bastards. I should have just ended them all while I was there. It was it saved me a lot of time and grief. He growled out. Everyone turned to look at the two new arrives. What happened sissy? Questioned Trixie as she walked up to Maze and hugged the demon woman. Maze glared at nothing. The civilian council has let it leak out that Naruto is the jailer for the Nine Tails. She said with anger and rage. It appeared to be one last gift from that bastard Danzo who had several sleepers in the civilian council. Said Kurama. Tsukumo raised an eyebrow to this. How was this posable? I killed that bastard when Naruto was only five. He questions. It appeared he had a time delay seal on a couple of those fools and it was to trigger on graduation day. Said Maze as she wanted to dig the man back up and kill him over again. Well there isn't anything we can do about it now. I just need to hide these wings and get going after eating something. Said Naruto. He was taking this better than any one of them could accept him to. Academy. All the clan children and a few civilians all gather into the classroom. Naruto sat in back with his back to the wall as he watched his and Sasuke's fan clubs fight with each other. Are they ever going to stop and take being a shinobi more serious? He asked to himself. I don't think they ever will. Not until they have that one mission. Said Kurama as he was laying out in the academy training ground enjoying the sun on his skin. Shikamaru walked into the classroom with Choji right behind her. She went to her normal seat next to Naruto and Choji took the sit next to her. Naruto looked over and smiled at his two best friends. Hey guys. He said as he watched Hino make her way up to them as well. Hey Naruto. Said Shikamaru as she smiled at him. There was a slight blush on her cheeks. Hey Naruto. Said Choji between bites. He was eating a new flavor of chip this morning. Wasabi, BBQ. Ino walked up to them. Hey guys. She said to her friends. How's it going Ino? Asked Naruto with a smile as well. But the Sai Ino sat down in the chair a row below her friends. Not good. Sakura thinks I still want Sasuke and every time I tell her I don't. She says I'm lying and trying to lower her guard. She told them. Troublesome. Doesn't she see that he likes guys? Said Shikamaru with a smirk on her lazy lips. Everyone laughs at this. True. He was checking me out yesterday while we all ran laps. Said Naruto as he shivered. 
A small group of friends laugh even more as they see Hinata enter the classroom and walk over to her friends. Hey guys. She says as she sits down next to Ino. Well enough about the team. Is everyone ready for today? Asked Naruto as he grinned at his friends. They all nodded their heads. Today was the big day. The day that made their dreams come true. It was the eve of Naruto's fifth birthday when Sakumo felt several familiar chakra signatures. Quietly and quickly he slipped out of his bedroom. But he still held his bottle of sake in hand. Just in case he need to play the fool. Just outside of Naruto's bedroom stood three figures. With the faint flicker of Naruto's nightlight, one could see that they had on white masks with northeast on them. These are Danzo's personal foot soldiers. They had a mission from their master to take a poor helpless child from his bed in the middle of the night. Something these bastards did all the time. Rounding the corner Sakumo grinned to himself. Really you old bastard. You're finally making your move on the boy. He thought to himself as he played the part of the drunker uncle walking down the hallway. Take one down and pass it around. Twenty bottles of sake on the wall. He sang as the three now identified root anbu, looked towards the drunkard coming their way. The root anbu looked at each other and used their anbu sign language to talk with each other as the one that appeared to be female turned back to Sakumo. Sakumo walked closer and smirked at the female root anbu. Well darling it is nice to meet you in this dark and empty hallway. Do you come here often? He asked her. She slides her hand behind her back and seconds later she pulled out a kunai and lunged at the drunkard that was walking her way. Using his sake bottle he caught the tip of the kunai in the mouth of the bottle and pushed it into the wall as it smashed and she lost her grip on the kunai. Her eyes widened behind her mask as she felt something impact with her stomach. She was feeling pain she had never felt before and something sharp was being pulled away from her stomach. Looking down at the hand she saw wolf-like claws being pulled out of the hole that was her stomach once was. Slowly she looked back up at the man before her and saw his eyes flashing yellow as they looked like wolf eyes as his face and body shifted from man to a wolf-like creature. From behind him came three red-eye wolves like hellhounds. Growling at the two other men in the hallway threading the child that just lied behind the door. For the root Anbu did something smart by closing the door not to wake or frighten the child before they could take them. The two male root Anbu pulled their kunai and attacked the wolf hellhounds. Thinking that the wolves were Jinjutsu. They were sadly mistaken. As the lead wolf jumped on the man standing next to the wall ripping out his throat. As the other two stopped lowering their heads as they growled at the man. He flew those several hand signs as he cupped his hand in front of his mask where his mouth is and breathed out a large fireball. Giant fireball jutsu. He cried out. Fear was lacing this man's voice as he didn't know what he was fighting. The hellhound stood their ground as the ball of flames blow past them. The rude Anbu's eyes grew wide as he saw that the hellhounds just stood there licking their lips as they both jumped at the stunned man. Screams could be heard though out the house as Kurama ran out of Naruto's room as he had placed a silent seal on the boy's door, blocking all sound from waking him from his slumber. What the hell is going on here? Demanded Kurama as he saw the hellhounds feasting on their kills and Sakuma was biting out the throat of the woman as he though her body to the hellhounds. Danzo. Growled out Weirwolf from of Sakumo as the others came running down the hallway as well. They all stopped dead in their tracks as they heard the name of the man, they knew they would have to kill to protect the boy from the evils that would ever come from that man. Kurama growled out as he heard the name. That bastard. I knew he was planning something from the last council meeting. His yoke was bleeding out of him as a crimson aura slowly surround him as he was ready to transform into his nine tails from. Calm yourself Kurama. You're going to hurt Naruto with your rage. Said Maze in a sickly calm voice. This stopped the chakra beast to pause and look over to the bedroom door he had came out of. With a deep breath his aura faded and slowly nodded his head to the demon woman. Sakumo grinned with blood dripping from his fangs as he looked at Maze. It appears it is time to take out the old bastard. He said in a dark growly voice as he kept his werewolf from. Trixie walked up to them and held a small grin on her lips. Time for Operation Mummy Disposal. She questioned them both. Both Maze and Sakumo shared a knowing look. They both looked at Trixie and nodded their heads as the angels just stood there looking at the trio as they wondered what they were up to. What is happening? Questioned Aminadiel as he held a confused expression on his face matching the other two. Trixie turned to the angels and smiled at them. Lucifer had given us a mission to kill Danzo if he had ever tried taking or hurting Naruto. She told them as she told her adult from and turned to the other two. Aminadia looked on with shock as Azrael felt sick at the idea. Even though she was deaf and had seen many dead bodies. But this just upset her. She didn't know why. But it did. Uriel just shrugged his shoulder at this. He could care less about this man Danzo. He had sowed his own fate with this planned kidnapping. I guess being an archangel he could care less if humans dead or lived. All he cared about was his mission and that was all that mattered to him. He does love his nephew but the old man. He didn't care whatsoever. Do what you must. 
said Uriel as he turned and opened the door of Naruto's room as he walked into the boy's room and closed the door behind him. But before he closed it, he spoke. I will stay with him tonight to make sure no others come for him while you three, maybe you four. Will you take care of the trash? The door closed on his words, and he walked over to the recliner in the corner of the boy's room and sat down and watched his nephew sleep as he was lost in his own thoughts. This child is going to be every special. Being human and half angel. Something that hadn't been seen in a very long time and the last half-breed had gone mad with power at a young age. But in these past five years he has done nothing to show he thirst for power or any of what the last one did. Maybe he is what this world needs and will bring forth peace that was spoken about from the ancient prophets. He was pulled out of his muse as Aminadiel walked into the bedroom. I know what you are thinking about brother. I believe Naruto will be different. Said Aminadiel as he trailed off as he looked over at the sleeping from of Naruto. I know. He is. I believe he might be the one that the ancient prophets that would counsel father. Said Uriel as he was there in the chamber along with Lucifer when the ancient prophets would speak in tongue about. Aminadiel nodded his head to his brother's words. I know. I was there for a few of them. He said as he placed his large hand on Naruto's black hair and gentle ran his fingers though the boy's locks. Azra looked at the door where her brothers had vanished behind and turned to the three before her. I will stand watch out here while you are gone. She told them. They nodded their heads as they turned to Kurama. Are you coming with us? Asked Sakumo. Shaking his head, no Kurama spoke. I am not able to go. The base is too far and I would lose control over my power. He told them as he sat down in the hallway and looked up with a sad expression on his face. The three nodded their heads as they vanished down the dark hallway to go have an old bastard meet his end. Maze vanished into her bedroom and changed into a tight black leather outfit and sealed away all her fun toys. As Trixie followed suit and vanished into her room and changed into black leather pants and black tank top with a studded belt with leather gloves with one inch spike on her knuckles. She as well quickly sealed away her weapons as well. Takumo stood leaning next to the front door. He already had all his weapons and he was going to have fun with Danzo before he killed the mummy of a man. He stood straight as he saw his two friends and demons. About time you two got dressed. He told them both with a smirk on his face. May smirked at him. Using her left hand, she cupped his face and gently slapped it. Oh, Sakumo you know I have to look good for you. She told him as she walked past him as she swayed her hips as she walked past. He just smirked as he bowed allowing Trixie to pass him as the girl giggled at him. You two should just hook up and get it over with. She told him as she ran away from him laughing as he tried to catch the girl into a bear hug. Danzo's root base. Danzo as he sat at his office desk as he looked over the missions he would be assigning to his agents. He glanced over at the clock on his wall. It was already 2 a.m. and his team had yet to return from bring him his prize. They should have been back by now. Those fools watching over the boy shouldn't have given them that much trouble. He said to himself as he placed down a file labeled a chair. Just then he heard a knock at his office door. A smirk slowly crossed his lips as he was finally going to reap his reward. Just then the door opened and a body flew past his head and crashed into the concrete wall with a sickling crushing sound as the body slowly sailed down the wall. There in the doorway stood a wolf-like beast standing on its hind legs. His single eye opens wide with shock. Kayubi he quietly questions to only himself. The wolf beast stepped into the man's office and was followed behind by two women. One he knew as Mei's Namikas. But the second one he didn't know. But there was something in her eyes that he knew he saw before. But where he didn't know. The beast spoke in a growled voice. This bastard is mine. He will pay for what he did tonight and what he did to me so long ago. He told the two behind him. Maze just nodded her head as Trixie stood back crossing her arms with a childish smile as she shifted back to her child form. This made Danzo's eye to widen. For now, he knew who this girl was and if he could get his hands on her. She would be very valuable to him and his plans to take over the village, along with the other hidden villages he had his single eye on. So, the Kayubi has finally taken over the boy. Asked Danzo as he glared standing up from his desk and his chair falling behind him. The laugh escaped the beast's mouth. You damn fool. I am not the Kayubi. I was one you murdered. For you saw me too weak to defend this village. For I scraped my mission to save the lives of my comrades for death. For that you made it look like I commenced suicide where my young son was the one to find my body. He told the bastard before him. There was only one man that he had done that to. That man was known as the White Fang Sakumo Haddock. But this beast couldn't be that man. For he was long dead. The beast before him smirked as four hellhounds came walking him and stood side by side with their master with arms or other body parts in their mouths. Yes Danzo. It's me Sakumo Haddock. Said Sakumo as he transformed into this original self and then back to his werewolf form. But how are you alive? I killed you myself. Said Danzo with fear lightly lacing his voice. 
A man who was proud of himself for not showing emotions like fear since he was a young man. Now that pride was gone. It was all over the floor as he pissed himself. Takumo smirk as he licked his huge fangs as he fell onto all fours as he slowly stalked his prey. Only to wrinkle its nose to the smell of the old man's foul piss. Oh Danzo you're taking all the fun out of this. I thought you would put up more of a fight for me and not act like a feeble old man before me. He said in a deep and dark voice with a guttural laugh. Danzo reached for his walking cane. Hidden within the shaft of the cane was a long sharp blade. He pulled the blade out and tried to swing it at the werewolf before him. But sadly, the blade shattered in Sakumo's mouth as it fell to the floor in many tiny pieces. Before Danzo ever knew it. His head was in the mighty jaw of Sakumo as he bit down ripping the head from the stump of a neck as the body fell over still moving, trying to crawl away. As that was the last action the old man was doing before, he was gone to become a pile of hellhound shit as Sakumo spit the head out of his mouth to his hounds. Pixie chose this time to speak up. I found several rooms with children locked up in groups of six. I believe there are about 60 kids in total. It looks like he was trying to restock his ranks with them. Many told me they are orphans, and several have also told me that he kidnapped them from their clans. She told Maze and Sakumo as he turned back into the new form of the man he is now. He was cleaning his mouth with a towel he pulled out of nowhere. Well it looks like we have a small problem here then. Said Maze as she looked over at Sakumo. The tall man just nodded his head. For this little new little piece of information, they would have to inform the Hokage. But the Sai Sakumo turned to the doorway. Let's gather up the children and head to the Hokage Tower and wake that old fool's ass up. He said as he vanished into the hallway as his hellhounds were busy cleaning up the bodies of all the root agents. Trixie just smiled as she just skipped down the hallway after the man as Maze turned around and crouched down and looked at Danzo's head. She was going to be neat this. So, he quickly pulled out a storage scroll and sealed the old bastard's head away and looked over at his desk and began sealing away all his files, for she was going to be need this to have some type of upper hand. After 45 minutes all 60 children and 3 adults well 2 and 1 child. They slowly made their way to the center of the village. Several small kids held their teddy bears or held the hands of the other child as some cried and sniffed. This caught the ears of several Anbu as Eno and Weasel appear before the group. Takumo stopped while he was holding a little girl with pale eyes in his arms. This little girl was the heiress of the Hyuga clan that had gone missing earlier this week, and next to them was several other clan heirs that had gone missing as well over the month. Naruto was going to be the final clan heir that was going to be kidnapped and brainwashed, and then returned as they had been lost in the vast woods surrounding the village. Ino's eyes widened as he saw who the man was carrying. Where have you found all those children? He demanded as Weasel pulled out a kunai ready to fight the man for his little brother who was sitting on the man's shoulders. I will explain once we get to the Hokage-sama's office. For I do not wish to repeat myself. If you need to get several medics and the parents of the clan children here. Said Sakuma with authority in his voice. Both young men nodded their heads and vanished as the group conditioned their track to the old tower. Their standing outside of the tower were about 20 Anbu medics. Their eyes widened in fear as they saw the shape of how the children were in. Let's get them out of this cold air and into the office. There you can look them over in better lighting and take them to the hospital for those who need it. Said Maze as she was holding a young blonde hair girl in her arms. Hi ma'am. They said as one. They entered the building as they began hearing running footsteps coming their way. Shaking it off they made it into the Hokage's office as the doors were thrown off the hinges as all the parents of the clan head's children. Behind them was the Hokage looking at them with shock in his eyes. What is happening here and what is this about missing children? He questions as he pushed past the parents as the medics looked over the children and tried to take the children away from their parents for just a few moments just to check on them. May stepped out of the shadow and turned to the old man. Hokage-sama we have to talk to you about something that happened tonight as we hope that we wouldn't be punished too much for our acts that happened when we were in an angered state of mind. She told him as everyone turned to look at her with a puzzled expression on their faces. What are you talking about Mei's chan Saratobi asked in a grandfatherly voice. Hake took out a scroll and walked over to the old man's desk as he sat down and opened the scroll and channeled Chakra into it and the head of Danzo popped out before him. His eyes widened as well as those who saw this. The children couldn't see what was happening for everyone was blocking them from the gruesome sight that was on the desk. Maze quickly resealed the head before one of the kids could see it. We killed Danzo tonight. For he sent his little rude Anbu after Naruto as he slept. Said Maze as she turns to Sakumo. I heard sounds coming from the hallway down from my bedroom and thought that Naruto woke up and so I went to check on him. To only find three rude Anbu standing outside of his room. They were there to take him to their master. So, I played the fool of a drunker and made quick work of them with the help of my summons. Said Sakumo as he smirked slightly. All eyes turned to the man with shock and fear. Shikakunara studied the man before him. 
What summons do you have? He asked. Hellhounds. Said Sakumo as he grinned at them as two hellhounds appeared next to him with flames licking their paws and tails. These are my summons. He told them as everyone took a step back away from the beast before them. Trixie walked up to the hellhounds and hugged one of them as it licked her cheek. They are only deadly if you provoke them or their master. She told them as many just looked at her with awe. Also, Hokage-sama I have all the files behind all the kidnapping and planned assassination list of several clans and or clan heads, for several clan elders are not happy with their clan heads. Said Maze as she smirked at the Hyuga head and Ichiha heads. The room exploded into an uproar from all the clan heads demanding all this information, so they know who they will be killing for this. Calm yourselves. I will be going over all these files, and I will be handing them off the respected clan heads. Said Siratobi. This calmed them down. Okajama. What will happen to the other children? Asked Trixie as she looked at the kidnapped and orphaned children, that they had no clue who their parents are. He looked at all the children and sighed. We will do blood work and see if we can find any family they may have, and I have a feeling some of these children are going to lead to answers of several unsolved murders in and around the village and several other villages. He told them. But for tonight we will find them all beds and go forward in the morning. Okajama. I and several others will start the blood work on the children and take them to the old hospital and have them stay there for the night and have several others watch over the children. Said Hawk as he was holding a little girl with bubblegum pink hair. He nodded his head as several other Anbu appeared in the office and the children slowly begin vanishing from his office. Only leaving the clan heads and children and the Namika's trio. I guess it is pointless in going home. Said Siratobi as he sighed and looked at the files before him. If you would like Hokage-sama. I can help you with all these files we took from Danzo tonight. Said Trixie with a gentle smile. Shikaku sighed. Troublesome. I will help as well. The quicker we can get this taken care of. The sooner we find out who has sold us out to that old bastard. He walked forth and took a sizable stack of files and sat at a desk off in the corner as Trixie took one as well and settled down on the floor next to the old man's desk. It was already 4.30 a.m. and Maze and Sakuma went home as some of the wives got to work and make tea coffee and food for Trio working hard for them and as a thank you for the return of their children. End of flashback. Naruto sighed as he saw Mizuki peeking into the room and looking over at Sasuke and then over to Naruto. Something doesn't feel right about the way he is looking at us. Thought Naruto as Kurama opened his eye looking at what his vessel was looking at. Keep an eye on him for he stinks of snakes. Said Kurama as he looked up at the classroom window Naruto was sitting at. All right, people. Today is the big day. Said Aruka as he walks into the classroom as he looked at the fighting fan girls. His head took on a larger from as he yelled. Shut the hell up and take your sits your little brats. He yelled frightened the girls as they ran to their seats. Aruka walked around the room handing out the test as Mizuki sat at their desk and was looking over a clipboard. I'll get Sasuke and Naruto and take them to Master Orochimaru. He thought to himself with a mental smirk to himself. After an hour all the students handed in their test papers and sat back chatting as Aruka took his time grading all the papers. He smiled as the clan heirs had does so well. Even the lazy Nara heir did a lot better than expected. It appears that Naruto and Sasuke might be tying for rookie of the year. Alright kitties let head outside and get the Tajutsu part of the exam over with. Said Aruka as he led them out the training field behind the academy. Inside the Hokage's office all the Jonin senseis stood around the Hokage's crystal ball watching all the kids and seeing who worked best together and who to keep away from each other. Back to the training field where Kurama was woken up by Naruto dropping down next to him. Harama. Kurama opened his eye and looks over at Naruto and his friends who all sat around him. Hey kids. He said with a large yawn. Aruka looked over at Naruto's lazy uncle who was always five steps behind the young boy. Hello Kurama-san. Are you here to watch how well young Naruto will do today? He asked the repeated man. Kurama looked over at the teacher with lazy eyes. Nah. I just fell asleep after dropping the brats all off. He told Aruka who just sweat dropped at the man before him. Alright brats listen up. You will be facing off against Mizuki. You must last five minutes in the ring with him or knock him out of it. If you are knocked out of the ring you will only get half of 30 points, and if you knock him out or KO, you will get 20 bonus points. Said Aruka as he looked at all his students. Naruto smirked along with Sasuke who was sitting in the tree away from his rabid fangirls. Maze and Trixie had long ago scared Naruto's fangirls from following him home and trying to kidnap him. But that was a memory for another time. Naruto snapped out of his thoughts as he looked Mizuki over. Yeah I really don't want him touching me in our spar. He told Kurama as he looked over at his uncle. I'll see what I can do when it comes to your turn. Said Kurama with a glare and oddly evil smirk mixed together. Naruto just nodded his head and relaxed back against the tree. Ino, Shikamaru and Hinata just shared a look. 
they had always found it weak how those two could talk without saying a word or really look at each other. The three girls just sighed at their antics and shook their heads and turned back to the spars going on before them. Many of the civilian girls went flying out of the ring within 30 seconds of entering the ring. At least he is doing his job and showing them that they need to get stronger to make it out in the field or just would be stains in the background to those who were making it in the real world. So far for all the clan children had gotten their full points. For they stood their own against the Chunin. After that night they had been returned home. Their parents had gone overboard in training them and pushing them too over their limits and made sure by time they left the academy they all would be low Chunin or high Gen and just depend on what skills the kids needed to learn from their clans. This had also frightened Jiraiya who had the boy sign the toad contract the second he returns to the village from his mission. Along with the toad contract Naruto also got his mother's contract with Arctic Wolf Pack and Dire Wolf Pack. Holding these three contracts helped the boy enter sage mode by the time he was 12 years old for each summons. He spent more time with the wolf summons for they helped in training and tracking and hunting. Well he spent time with the toads to hear stories about his father and learn several sealing and several other things. But on his 15th birthday, Naruto had gotten into a drinking contest with all three boss summons, and to the displeasure of Kurama. Naruto had won, but Kurama made him pay for it for about three days. He learned the next day that hangovers were a bitch and wouldn't drink again until he was much older, and Kurama has fun reminding him each time when the three bosses wanting rematches. Naruto Uzumaki Namakas. Called Iruka. Naruto looked over at Kurama. As Kurama stood up from where he was laying down at. I'll take Mizuki's place. He must be tried from dealing with all those brats. He said with a smirk. Mizuki just nodded his head. The clan kids had given him a good workout and he didn't really want to go up against Naruto and Hinata had left him feeling sore for her attacks. Alright kit. No holding back. Said Kurama with a smirk. Naruto nodded his head to the man. Alright Rama. He said with his own foxy grin. Both vanished before everyone as their fist met as they stood in the middle of the ring. Hiroka and Mizuki watched with wide eyes. They had moved so quickly they couldn't even follow their movement. This might be a little harder than I first thought. Sasuke will be putting up a good fight if I try taking him and Naruto. I don't even want to try to get that boy. He thought to himself with fear in his eyes. Five minutes later as the buzzer went off Naruto went flying out two seconds later hitting the tree behind him. Hiruka ran over to the boy making sure he was okay. Naruto are you alright? He asked. Naruto jumped back up and ran at Kurama ready to keep fighting but stopped when Kurama helped up his hand stopping the boy in his tracks. That is enough and answer your sensei's question. Said Kurama as he smirked seeing the boy was ticked off and wanting to keep going. But he nodded his head and turned to look at Iruka. Yes sensei I'm alright. He told the man before him. Iruka just looked at the ebony hair boy with shock and fear in his eyes. Are you sure you don't need to see the nurse or something? He questions once more as he walked over to the boy. Yeah, sensei I'm alright. This was nothing. Sparing at home is a lot worse than what you saw here today. Kurama sensei was going very easy on me. Said Naruto as he gave his teacher a foxy grin. All Iruka could do was nod his head along with Mizuki as his plans have totally been derailed from what he just witnesses at this moment. Kurama turned to Iruka with his own foxy grins. If you like I can finish the sparing part of the exam with the Ichiha boy and Yamanaka girl. He offered the stunned man. Are you sure about that Kurama-sama? Asked Iruka as he had the look of fear in his eyes. Yeah, it will be fine. I have already sparred with them in the past. So, they know what to expect from me. Explained Kurama as Sasuke walked into the sparring ring. Kurama sensei just remember I'm not like you and the dope. So, don't try to kill me. Said Sasuke as he looked annoyed over at his friend and back at the crazed Riti before him. Kurama gave him a dismissive wave as he got ready to push the boy and see where his standing was. For it has been six months since he could get the boy to spar with him. For last time he almost broke the boy in half last time with just a gentle axe kick. Gentle to Kurama was the term like a bull in a china shop. Alright you two. Go. Said Aruka with fear in his voice. Both fighters studied each other as Sasuke made the first move. Sasuke tried a spinning axe kick. As he launched himself up in the air. He was trying to use the sun to blind Kurama. But this boy was sadly wrong as Kurama grabbed his leg and spun him to the tree that was in the ring. Sasuke's boy slammed hard as spit and blood came out of his mouth as he slowly pushed himself up off the ground as he wiped his mouth with his right arm and spit out whatever blood that was lingering in his mouth and glared at Kurama. Bastard. You're having fun toying with me. Growled out Sasuke as he glared at the tall man. Kurama just chuckled at this. Who's to say I was or not? He told the boy. Sasuke's fan club screamed and yelled at the man. You cheater. You're trying to hurt out Sasuke-kun. They kept screaming until they began fighting with each other over who the boy belongs to. 
Sasuke looked at the girls with fear as he looked over at Kurama with a look. Please just kill me now. He had in his eyes. Hiruka saw this and shook his head at the boy. Sasuke also saw this but just sighed. Slowly nodding his head. Yeah, he couldn't take the easy way out. He really needs a girlfriend or something. Maybe then they would leave him alone. But hell, who was he kidding? That would never happen. The fight went on and Sasuke lasted the full five minutes. But he was limping out of the ring. For Kurama wasn't going to allow the boy to get away unhurt. Ino smiled at Kurama. He knew that smile and he would have to move quick before she tried entering his mind again. She has tried several times. But luckily, he always got away from her. Don't you even think about little girl. He growled out at her as his eyes flashed giving her a warning. Ino swallowed hard and nodded her head. Hiruka looked at them both puzzled and voiced himself. What is going on here? I was planning to take over his mind. But I haven't been able yet. But he has warned me if I try and I do get in he will lead me to the pits of hell and scare me to death. Said Ino as she looked away. Hiruka just nodded his head. Okay you two. Go. He told them. Ino went in with a reverse spin kick to Kurama's head. But he caught her leg and pushed her away as she went spinning to the other side of the field. Ino smirked as she ran at him with a raised fist. Which Kurama caught with his left hand as he held her right hand. You are getting better little girl. But you still have a lot more to work on. I think you will need to come and spar with Trixie after you are placed on your team. He told her. Yeah, I saw Trixie this morning and she told me the same thing. She even said bring Shika with me as well, for she kept saying that the future wife of Naruto needs to be able to fight like a demon to protect herself and their future children. Said Ino with a wink and a smirk at her two friends, who were both blushing up a storm and looking away from each other as their group of friends laughing at the two young lovebirds. Karama just smirked at this. That is true. She goes need to get stronger. He said as he winked at Shika. Naruto grumbled to himself. Hiro Kitsune. Looking away as he blushed even brighter. The fight finished with Ino flying out as the buzzer went off. She was caught by Naruto as he glared at Kurama. Man, you know you need to go easier on the girls. Or I'm telling Maze on you again. Kurama just rolled his eyes as he walked over to the tree and sat down. Aruka cleared his throat and looked everyone over and smiled. Well done everyone. Let's go inside to finish the last part with the ninjutsus. He ordered them in. Everyone went back inside as Kurama returned to his nap and ignored his jailer yelling at him mentally. Jerk why did you have to put us in the spotlight? You do know my fan club is going to go after her now. I don't want one of my friends hurt because of those crazy girls and several guys. Naruto was always scared after he found out guys even wanted him. That wasn't his cup of tea. Maybe he could send them to Sasuke. For no one knows if he likes girls or boys. After they all entered the classroom and took their seats, Iruka went down the list and Naruto just closed his eyes for a nap as he knew he was going to be next to last for this part and didn't care to listen. But he awoke from time to time as he heard one of his or Sasuke's fan club members coming out crying for they didn't pass or when one would scream and yell about the power of love that they are meant for one of the two boys. Both boys knew they just wanted to keep the hell away from those crazed girls boys scared them. True stalkers and the little pieces of paper they had severed on many of them have proved to do little to nothing to save them. Maybe now with them becoming shinobi there was more laws on stalkers to help keep them safe. They could only hope. It was finally Naruto's turn as he walked into the classroom as he could feel someone pumping Charka his way. Kurama opened a lazy eye and smirked as he was going to fuck with this white hair man. Kurama pumped his Charka back into Mizuki locking him in a hellfire inferno jinjutsu, making the man screaming from his seat next to Aruka. Aruka looked at Mizuki puzzled as to what the hell was going on. Mizuki fell to the ground foaming at the mouth for Kurama had locked him into the jinjutsu. Aruka looked on with fear. I think the sun must have gotten to him or something. Said Naruto as he created two shadow clones to take the man to the nurse's office. Hirama smirked making sure none of this would never come back on Naruto. Only that Mizuki had a mental snap and all the stuff he had planned was pushed forward for when Yamanaka would mind walk him to find why he snapped. He made it look like something like a time trigger for Marachimaru. That is what the bastard gets. Said Kurama as he opens his eye from his shady tree. Iruka was shocked that Naruto could make the solid clones. When did you learn the shadow clone Naruto? He questions. Auntie Mays taught me after she checked my chakra levels and at the time, I was already at high jonin. But now I'm at Kajur Sanin levels now. So, I will never be able to form the normal clone we learn here. Explained Naruto. Oh. Well okay you pass on that one. Now the other two. Said Aruka. Naruto replayed himself with Kurama who was annoyed that he lost the warm sun on his face and cool breeze in his hair. Then Naruto appeared next to him and made himself look like his father. Well done. You pass. Said Aruka as he handed Naruto his forehead protector. Naruto smirked as he showed it to Kurama. 
who patted the boy on his head as Naruto went back to the classroom and tried it to his left bicep and sat down next to Shika as Kurama just smirked even more. After everyone had finished with their exam. Haruka walked back into the room and looked at everyone. For all of you who passed I will see you here tomorrow morning for team assignment. He told them as everyone got up and left. All the clan heirs ran up to their families showing them they had passed, and the civilian parents just glared at Naruto for many different things. Some for he wouldn't give their daughters the time of day, and others who found out what was inside of Naruto. But mostly for the latter for the boy was going to hold a lot of power once he came to age, and as he was royalty because of his mother being the princess of the land of Wave, and his father being Hokage. He was the prince of the village. Hokage office. Both Trixie and Maze smirked as they saw their boy had passed and with flying colors. Looks like our boy got rookie of the year for that little move. Said Maze to Trixie who just nodded her head and giggled. What do you all think of your future student said Siratobi as he took a poof of his pipe. Maze smirked. If I get the team I want. Then they did very well. She told the old man before her. Yeah I just want to be the co-captain with Maze for I know she is like Anko who needs to have fun in T and I are on missions. Said Trixie as she giggled. Anko who was behind the girl just grinned. What can I saw? It's always more fun with Maze. She said with a wink to Maze. Maze just grinned and all the men drooled at the two women and stepped away in fear as well. For they never knew if the two were dating or just having fun with them and then attacked them when they don't even know what was going on around them. Dropping your guard with those two was very deadly. The Kashi glares at Maze. I want Naruto and Sasuke. He growled out at the man. She blew him a kiss. Not on your life buddy. They will be mine. She told him with an evil glint in her eyes. Kakashi looked over at the Hokage, hoping for some type of help form their leader. I'm sorry Kakashi, but you will not be getting Naruto. For it was a deal I worked out with Maze and Kurama. They both wanted family with the boy, and they believe you would favor Sasuke more for the promise you made his late brother. Said Siratobi as he sighed. But Hokage-sama. I wouldn't do that. Naruto was my sensei's son, and it should be me training him. Kakashi whine. Hell no. Said Maze as she glared at him. He is my nephew and you would be too damn lazy to train him right. You're always late and never take anything serious when it comes to training and other things, and that is something we are unable to allow to happen. She told him as Kakashi was in the corner sulking in the corning, drawing small circles on the floor as everyone looked on with shock. No one has ever talked to him in that way. Until today. After that tongue lashing that was given to Kakashi. All the future senseis left the office looking over the files of their students and hopeful future genin of their village. Hell. Lucifer sighed as he saw his son passed and what happened with Mizuki. That bastard really tried, didn't he? He asked his wife as Kashina is having fun stabbing Danzo repeatedly. Danzo screamed in pain as he glazed at the king of hell. You bastard. I, I knew there was something wrong with you. Said Danzo between screams as he is panting. You, you damn woman. I always knew you were a demon. He told Kashina. But Kashina smirked at him as white angelic wings came from her back. To be truthful I am an angel. But I wanted to stay with the man I love and married those years ago. She told Danzo as his single eye widened with horror at the sight before him. Are you going to tell me now what happens you had with Orochimaru and Madara? Questioned Lucifer as he looked away from his son and his friends. What do you care what happens to that godforsaken village? You're here in hell. Said Danzo as he glared. Lucifer smirked at the old cyclops. I matters to me for my son is in that village and I do hold a little love for it. He said as Kashina smirked as she stabbed the man once more. Orochimaru wants to bath the village in hellfire so it can be remade in my image of what a shinobi should truly be. Said Danzo as he smirked to himself. Lucifer just laughs. Do you honestly believe he would allow you to rule over a village he burns to the ground, probably killing all that live in the village, and those that you had hidden in your root bases wouldn't have been enough to rebuild the ruins of that village? He told the old fool. Danzo looked at him with shock. Would Orochimaru double cross him? Hashina looked at him with a knowing look. You know he would have. How foolish were you? Were you so drunk in your self-claim power? He questions him. Danzo never said a word just glaring at the two before him. You damn old fool. I can't believe you bought in on that damn snake's lies. Said Lucifer as he slammed his fist on his desk. This made Danzo jump a little for he wasn't this reaction from the man before him. Kashina walked over to her love and placed her hand on his shoulder. It will all be fine. Just send the hellhounds to Sakuma with a message about the attack during the Chunin exams and how the Suna are foolishly taking part with Odo. Said Kashina as she looked at Danzo as he turned away from them. He knew he failed. His lust for the hat had led him to the downfall of his home, the place he said he would protect from anything and anyone. For he had done down a very dark path that day Siratobi who was chosen to be Hokage by their sensei. 
You damn old fool you have no idea what you have done to that village you have claimed to love oh so much. You have doomed them. I only hope this message gets to them soon and the old man listens to Sakumo. Said Lucifer as he was growing tried of all this bullshit. I do not know nothing about Madara. The one you would need to speak with would be Orochimaru, for he was part of that little fan club that is hunting for all the tail beast. Said Danzo. For he knew he had already given them everything he knew and was no use to them anymore. So, he believed. Tell me the plan of entry that damn snake and his men would be taking to get in. Said Lucifer. He wanted to know everything he could get. Anything to keep his son safe any way he can from hell. Anzo looked at him with shock. How do you know I even know anything about his plan of attack? He asked. Lucifer looked at him as if he was a moron. Come on Danzo. Do you take me for a fool? I know you know how he was going to get in and his plan of attack. Danzo sighed and began telling Lucifer everything as a demon wrote it all down. After Danzo was finished another demon came and took him away as Lucifer ordered for that information to be sent to Sakumo and as soon as possible. Sakumo. Sakumo sat in the backyard in one of the many gardens. He was quietly meditating mixing his chakra with his demonic energy. This would make his attack much deadlier and he shifts to only take less than a second to happen. But he was pulled from his meditation as his hellhound ruby came running to him. She held a scroll in her mouth and he saw Lucifer's seal on it. So, he knew something big was going to be happening for Ruby to be in a solid form from her shadow form. What does he send me girl? Sakumo asked her. Ruby dropped the scroll before her masters. Master has information on that snake. He will be attacking about six or seven months from now. In that Chunin exam thing they hold here every so often. She informed him. Sakumo nodded his head as he stood up and opened the scroll. He wanted to make sure there wasn't anything in there just for him before he would go to the Hokage and Jonin commander and dragon on this information. He saw nothing for him and how one of his spies caught one of Danzo's men, and he sang like a bird. For the curse seal on his tongue was now gone. Quickly getting to his feet Sakumo walked back to the main house and grabbed his Jonin vest and put it on and out the door where he saw Maze and Trixie coming his way. They both saw the scroll in his head. They both knew Lucifer had sent a message and for Sakumo to be leaving the compound it meant it was something dealing with the village. They both figured that Danzo must have finally sang and told them everything about the snake and Madara. There isn't anything about Madara. The old mummy knew nothing about him. Said Sakumo as he shook his head and walked past the two. He made a beeline to the tower where he saw Naruto and Sasuke both running away from their fan clubs. But the girls' boys appeared to be foaming at the mouth as they chased them. Naruto saw his uncle and ran to the werewolf demon and hid behind the man as Sasuke followed suit. Please save us. They have gone mad for they didn't make it into the shinobi program. Cried Naruto as Kurama was sitting on a rooftop laughing his ass off at the scene before him. Tsukumo shook his head at what was happening before him. The rabbit teens before him. You best be heading home for you wouldn't like me when I'm mad. He said as his eyes flash amber. But they didn't care. They wanted their prizes and this man wouldn't be standing in their way. Several made the mistake of attacking Sakumo as he transformed into his werewolf form. He let out a blood-chilling howl. This stopped the rabid teens in their spots. Finally snapping out of whatever trance they had been in. Before them was a huge demon beast. Many screamed and ran away as other wet and shat themselves as they passed out where they stood. Anbu appeared and wrinkled their noses behind their masks. Really? You had to scare them this bad? Asked Nico as she looked at the werewolf shifting shinobi before her. Tsukumo shrugged his shoulders at the woman. They were going after the boys again, and I feared they might hurt them this time. He said as he took a step to the left to show Naruto and Sasu call wide eye with fear. Nico looked at the two boys and those that were passed out on the ground and back at the frightened boys and let out a sigh. I let it sigh this one time. She told them as she the other took their respected teenager and returned them back to their homes. Giving the parents a warning about their children need to stop their stalking of two of Leaf's newest genin. Naruto looked up at his uncle finally being snapped out of his fear. Thank you for saving us again. He said sheepishly. Sasuke just nodded his head in agreement. You two need to learn to frighten them away or something. Maybe get some girlfriends or something. Said Sakumo as he looked at the two teens. Sasuke smirked at the man before him. Naruto already has a girlfriend. He said with a laugh. Shut up team. Said Naruto with a stutter. Sakumo raised an eyebrow to this and on Kei Kurama appeared before the man. His little girlfriend is Shikamarinara. He said with a huge shit-eating grin on his face. Naruto glared at him with murder in his eyes. Bastard. He mumbled to himself as this made Kurama laugh harder along with Sakumo. She is very smart. I don't know what she sees in this little shit. Said Sakumo as he laughs harder as Naruto's eyes widen in shock and then turn to anger at the man before him. You know you two are jackasses. Said Naruto as he turned and walked away. Or more like stomped away from the two laughing men. 
Sasuke just smirks and runs after his friend. So, Ruby brought you something important? Asked Kurama as he eyed the scroll in the man's hand. Yeah. But it is mostly on that damn snake. Nothing on the other bastard. Said Sakumo as Kurama nodded his head to this. Alright then, I leave you to your mission and go watch over the boys. Said Kurama as he goes up in flames. Sakumo just smirks and finally makes his way to the tower. Where he saw Shikaku walking into the building. He ran up to the man. A man that I was hoping to find. He said to Shikaku. Said Nara looked over at the man next to him. Lazily raising an eyebrow at him. Why would you want to be looking for me? He questions as he stopped the scroll in the man's hand and let out a long and lazy sigh. You got word on something that will impact the village and has put Jureya's own spy network to shame. He said as they both made their way up the stairs to the Hokage's office. Siratobi sighed as he glared at his paperwork. Part of him wanted to set it on fire. But soon his replacement would be ready and then he would be done with this all. He was pulled his muse as there was a knock at his door. Come in. He called to whoever was on the other side. Then walked both Sakumo and Shikaku. He raises any eyebrow to this. What brings you two here? He asked them. I just got word from my summons Ruby from my spy network and I believe Dragon should be here for this. Said Sakumo as Dragon appeared right next to them. What do you have for us? Asked Dragon. Sakumo moved into the Hokage's office and took a seat in one of the armchairs before the old man's desk. Shikaku followed after the man not sure what was waiting them from what the man next to him had to say. Dragon went and stood next to the aged leader. I got something here that you might not like. There were a few of Danzo's little roots left out in the world. Said Sakumo as he handed the scroll over to Siratobi as the old man took it and looked at the strange broken seal on it. He raised an eyebrow as he looked back at Sakumo. So, your network has out down Jureyas once more. Asked Saratobi as he sighed and unrolled the scroll the scroll and began reading it. One could only laugh at all the reactions run across his face as Dragon read over his shoulder. Once he was done, he handed it over to Shikaku to read and he had a look of horror on his lazy face. So, what you have here is true. Then Danzo was truly a traitor and has been working with my traitor of a student for a very long time. For it also talks about how he wanted to put sleepers in the clans with the clan head's children. But I will have Anoichi and Jureya look for any seals and triggers once more. Said Saratobi as he appeared to have aged another 30 years before them. Yeah. That would be a good idea. But I don't think he ever got around to doing that to the children for that night we attacked him. Said Sakuma with a wolfish grin on his face. I do believe you are right. But it is good to just double check to be safe. Said Saratobi as he just wanted to bash his head against his desk a million times over. With this new development we are going to up the training of all the new genin teams. Said Shikaku as his lazy gaze looked at the other men in the office. As well we will have to up the training of the shinobi and anbu of this village. We will not fall to that snake bastard and our allies that are siding with him. Said Dragon as he looked over at everyone. Well I know how to fix what's going on with Suna. For their lord has been sending their missions to us. For he isn't to please with Raza for what he did to his sister. Said Siratobi as he looked up at Dragon. If we redirect those mission back to their village that could help some and maybe stop them from siding with Arachimaru. But that isn't a 100% guarantee though. Said Shikaku. He is right. Also that would tip our hand that we know something is up and the snake could move on us before we are ready. Said Sakumo. What we need to do is act as if we are in the dark and maybe from time to time redirect a mission or two to them, stating we would need their aid on it. He suggests as he looked at the other men as they nodded their heads. That would work. Also while we do that, we can sway them from siding with him and maybe even stepping back and aiding us. Said Siratobi sounding hopeful. Even though he was a veteran of two of the three shinobi wars. He still held on to hope. Only time will tell. Said Sakumo. Team placement. It was the day that all the young Jen and Hopeful had been waiting for. Naruto had gotten up early that morning for his normal morning training with his family. Trixie was standing in the kitchen looking outside as he watched Sakumo and Mei's spar and Kurama just laid in a tree watching them. Naruto walked down the stairs and into the kitchen as he found his aunt. For the three angels had been sent off on missions for the village. Good morning Auntie Trixie. Said Naruto as he smiled at her. Trixie turned around and smiled at the boy. Good morning Naruchan. Are you ready for today? She asked him. Yeah. I'm hoping I get a good team and a sensei that will teach me. For I kept hearing that Kakashi wanted me as his student and what I heard around from others, he is always late for everything. Said Naruto. Trixie nodded her head. Yeah he did. But Maze wouldn't hear of it and would have gutted him if he was your sensei and didn't teach you anything as well was late for all your training. She told him. Anyways Sasuke is stuck with him. So don't worry. She told him with a smirk. Naruto laughed. Better the team than me. He grinned as he made his way outside. He would eat something after training. 
for how hard they push him during their morning training he would mostly get sick and that wasn't something he was in the mood of reliving at the moment. Shinobi Academy. Everyone made their way into their classroom for one final time. All the fangirls boys watched their two princes walk by them. Naruto took his seat in the far back last row, as Sasuke took his normal seat in the middle row next to the window. After a while everyone filed in and chatter could be heard. Ino was sitting on Naruto's desk looking down at her fellow blonde. So what team do you think you'll be on? She asked him. He looked up at her. I'm not sure. All I know for now it isn't going to be with Sasuke, for he got a sucky sensei. Naruto snickered at that part. Ino, Shikamaru, and Choji arched an eyebrow at this as Hinata looked over at him. How do you know that? Asked Ino wanted this little bit of gossip. My auntie Trixie told me. Said Naruto with a grin. Just before Ino could laugh and anyone else could say anything Aruka walked into the classroom. Alright people sit down and listen up. I have your team placements. Said Aruka as Naruto spaced out. It isn't too bad brat you have Maze and Trixie as your Jonin senseis and Shikamaru and Ino as your teammates. Said Kurama as he was looking in the classroom window from his tree branch. Yeah, I know. But I am shocked they gave me two girl teammates. But they both did tie for top Kanoichi of the year followed by Sakura, and I know she is going to be teamed with Sasuke, and I think it was Kiba who had the lowest of the grades. Making him the dead last of our year. His mother is going to kill him for that. Naruto laughed to himself. Team 7. Will be Sasuke Chiha, Sakura Haruno, Kiba and Yuzuka with Akamaru. Your Jonin Sensei with be Kakashi Haddock. Said Aruka. Yeah baby. The power of love. In your face Eno pig. Bellowed Sakura as she was jumping around. Both Kiba and Sasuke looked to be crying to have the loud banish on their team. The worthless useless fangirl. That will be enough Sakura. For I can have the Hokage change the team around. Said Aruka as a demon appeared behind him. This made Sakura shut up and sit down as she looked to be scared of the man. Teammate. Will be Choji Akamichi, Hinata Hayuga, and Shino Aburam. Your Jonin sensei would be Kurana Yuhi. Joji looked to be sad. For he thought he would be with his two best friends in the new generation of Ino Shikacho. But he guess it wasn't meant to be this time around. I'll be okay Choji you have Hinata and Shino and they are really nice. Said Ino as she smiled at her large friend. Yeah you're right. Said Choji with a smile. Final team will be team 10. For team 9 is still in rotation. Said Aruka as he looked up at the last remain 3 that hadn't been called on. Team 10 will be Naruto Namaka's Yuzumaki, Shikamaru Nara, Ino Yamanaka, and your Jonin senseis will be Maze and Trixie Namaka's. Said Aruka with a smile. Why does the dope get two senseis? Asked Sasuke. Aruka looked over at Sasuke. It's because Maze also works in T&I and, and from time to time will not have time to train her team. So her sister Trixie will step in to train them for her. He told the raven hair boy. Well your senseis will be here shortly so be ready to move on out. Said Aruka as he jumped out of the way as his classroom door explode from a body being thrown though it. A silver hair man with three fourths of his face being covered laid on his desk as he looked up to see both Maze, Trixie, and Sakumo grinning down at the down Kakashi. Boy I hope that this lesson on being on time sticks with you. For I would be more than happy to be repeating it on a daily basis. Said Sakumo as he stalked over to Kakashi as he stood over him. I know my younger brother taught you better than this. There isn't a reason to be late and I'm sick and tried of those bullshit lines you use. If I hear from your gen and you are late and you tell them you took the long way because of a black cat. I will find that cat and ram it up your ass. He told the now even more pale Kakashi. Yes sir. I will be on time I swear. Said Kakashi as he stood up and looked at the man before him with fear. Good to hear. Said Sakumo as he turned to leave. He is just like my father. Thought Kakashi as he stood up and looked at all the genin hopefuls with shock and fear on their faces. Team 7 you are with me. He said as he made his way for the door. Team 7 got up and followed after their sensei not knowing what to think. Naruto on the other hand was laughing. He really did what he said he was going to go do to him. Ino looked at him. You knew about this? She asked him. Well yeah. But we better go. For Maze is glaring at us. Said Naruto as he got up followed by his two teammates. Yugaku Ichiha with the clan elders and several others radical rebel members on their clan meet in their secret meeting spot under the clan shrine. Yugaku Sama. Are you sure it is wise to move against the village at this time? Asked one of the elders. Yugaku glared at the man. With Itachi forsaking the clan and becoming a missing ninja, what other option do we have? He questioned the same elder. Off in the shadows Ruby and the other hellhounds laid in wait for the time would come for them to kill these fools. For them trying to overthrow the village and take over wouldn't work for her master nor his master. She sat in her human form in the shadows holding a video camera, recording everything these fools said. She was quite beautiful. 
with dark chocolate brown hair dark brown eyes and stood about 5'4 with an hergless figure. Holly growled to Ruby. It's almost time. We just need a little more and we can kill them. She told her fellow hellhound. Holly nodded her head and went back to watching the foolish humans. Gugaku looked at everyone in the room. The third has grown to soft with his old age. We need a leader that will build this village back up to its former glory when Madara first found it with the Senju clan. But sir that was during the Waring clan times. It has been over a hundred years and none of the clans or any one of the villages for that matter have been at war. Yes, we did come close with Danzo kidnapped all the heirs and tried blaming it on Kumo or another village. Said a young Achiha boy. He will be one of the first we kill. For those who question me will die. Thought Fugaku. I know and my youngest was part of the group of children kidnapped and it was the Kami dam at Namakas that he was returned safety to us. He said as he looked around. But we need to bath the village in fire and brimstone to make it rise once against as the superpower in was in the past three wars. Said Fugaku. The others nodded their heads in agreement to this madman they follow. Off in the shadows is a man with an orange spiral mask watching and laughing at his former clansmen. These fools. I'll slay them all soon. No one with this bloodline will live. He thought to himself as he vanished into a void. Ruby and Holly smelt and saw the man. Get to Lucifer and have him look for his former students in the afterlife. For that man smelt like a chiha and something else. Something planet base. Said Ruby to Holly. As the other hellhound nodded her head to her pack leader. Ruby closed the camera and stepped back into the shadows. This was all that her master need to move against those fools. In their next little meeting they wouldn't be walking out alive. Hell. Lucifer looked over files and growled out as he was growing tried of this. He wanted to be back on earth with his son. But his father told him his time would come. But he didn't know what he meant by that. Holly came running into his office. Master. She called out. Lucifer looked up from his paperwork as Kashina walked into his office with tea and some cakes she had made for him. What is it Holly? He asked the hellhound. Master I have a massage from Ruby. Said Holly as she sat before her master. She said that the orange masked man smells of Ichiha and planet and that to check and see if your two dead students are in the afterlife. She told him. This made Lucifer arch an eyebrow and strand up from his desk. Ran in Abito where his students and his life is Minato and they both had dead. Or so he had believed. Are you sure about that? Asked Kashina as she was now worried. Would one of his students go so far as betray us? She questioned. Holly looked over at her mistress. Yes, mistress I believe they would. For have you ever looked at the heart of an Ichiha? All those bastards want his power. For they are planning to overthrow the village. Ruby has the village evidence and is going to be showing it to Sakumo here shortly, and if they take the village. They soon will go after the young prince for the power that is held within him, and if they find out he is half angel. Holly trailed off for she saw her master getting upset. I'll meet with death and find out what is going on and see if he has my two former students. Said Lucifer as he stood up and stormed out of his office. Hashina just watched her husband leave and turned to the hellhound next to her. This isn't going to end very well. Holly could only nod her head in agreement. Lucifer walked down a dark and shadowy hallway that led to an old gothic wooden door. Knocking three times. The door swung open. It has been a long time Lucifer. Said a dark voice from the shadows of the dark room with only light from candlelight. Yes, has been a while death. But I think you can drop the act. Said Lucifer as he looked around as the darkness faded away and the room brightened up into an old English study with Death sitting behind a large oak desk. Tell me Lucifer this isn't a social call. Said Death. Lucifer sighed and looked at the tall skinny man with grey hair and grey pin suit. I need to know if my two former students are here in the afterlife. He told Death. Death arched his eyebrow as he placed his teacup back down and waved his hand over his desk as a book appeared before him. Let's see. He said with a hum. The frown married his face as he looked for the two names. It appears Abito Ichiha and Ran are not in the afterlife. He told Lucifer as he looked a little annoyed. It appears Madara killed my reaper that was sent to reap Abito. As for Ran she was saved then is in Kumo. Survived having the three tails still sealed in her. One by the name of Killer B saved her life and had her seal fixed. I am glad she is alive. But this is troublesome if Abito is alive. For that means he is the one that attacked my wife the night my son was born. Said Lucifer as he was growing enraged by this betrayal of his student. What could have made his fun-loving student fall so far? I know that look. All I can tell you. Love can do a lot to a lost soul. Said Death. Thank you for your time. Said Lucifer as he turned to leave. It appears Sakumo is going to be sending me many souls to be judged before Abito is able to carry out his plans. Said Death. Lucifer turned and looked over his shoulder. That he is. He will be sending you most of all the adults of the Achiha clan, along with the elders and clan head. He told Death. 
Beth nodded his head as a smile graced his thin weathered lips and picked up his slice of pizza he had made from his from the man that used to own the pizza shop in Chicago so long ago. Lucifer walked back into his office where his wife awaited him as she looked over files. Well Death just told me that Abito and Ren are still alive. Ren is in Kumo with the three tails in her and Abito is masquerading as Madara. He told his wife. Ashina dropped the files in her arms and stood there for several moments before her brain just clicked. I'm going to murder that bastard. She screamed. All of hell shook from her roar of anger. Elsewhere. Though B sat watching Payne talk with his little gang about gathering the tail beast. Just then a shiver ran down his spine. I feel like someone just pulled me out of my grave and set it ablaze and ripped my body to pieces. He thought to himself. Hidden leaf. Ruby walks into the train ground to find Naruto flying past her as Akuma laughing at the boy using his wings to catch himself midair. Oh right brat. Ruby is here meaning I got orders or she goes something good for me to see said Sukumo as he stood up and pulled the towel he had in his pocket out to clean his face. Al all right. I need to clean up. Said Naruto as he ran into the house away from his crazy uncle. Ruby smirked at Sukumo. Well lover I do have a both for you. Also I very pissed off Kashina wanting to go to war. She told her master lover. Really now? Asked Sukumo as he walked up to the ex-witch now hellhound. He pulled her into a kiss. Yes, Abito was behind the attack. He was also at the meeting that Moron Fugaku was having tonight. Said Ruby as she saw his eye flash amber for a spilt second. I see. Said Sukumo as he turned from her and sat down on a log that was next to the ground field. They're going to have their meeting tonight during the full moon. Master believes that this will be the best time for you to attack and kill them all. Said Ruby as she sat down next to him. This isn't the best time. The foolish angels are away. But I will make do with Maze and Trixie and the pack of hellhounds said Sukumo as he hand his hand though his raven locks. I wish you would allow your hair to go back to its lovely silver locks. Said Ruby as she ran her fingers though his hair. He smirked at her. You know I am unable to do that. With my son still alive and how he didn't take my death too well and the death of Lucifer. Yeah him seeing me alive. It would drive him to the madhouse. He told her as he leaned back and catching her lips with his. You two do know we have a teenage running around the house and at any given time he has his friends over, right? Asked Trixie as she was giggling at the two before her. The old enough. Said Sukumo as he pouted at the girl before him. Looks like boss man has a mission for us. Asked Trixie as she walked over to the two as Maze came out of the house hearing mission. Yes, he has sent orders to kill all the elders and clan head of the Achiha and all those who are going along with his foolish plan. Tonight is the night he wanted you all to attack for it's the night of the full moon and you might be able to get the fake Madara. Said Ruby as Trixie and Maze both grinned. Hirama was sitting in a tree listening to them. Sounds like a good plan. I'll babysit the kid and the angel should be back tonight. He told them as he jumped down it stood next to them. I guess that is the plan. Ruby get the pack ready and we will meet at 11.30 outside the Achiha shrine. Said Sukumo. Ruby nodded her head and vanished in flames. Well things are moving along a lot more quickly than we had hoped. Said Trixie as she crossed her arms and stood before them in her adult form. They have tipped our hand. If they take control of the village. Who's to say they wouldn't just use Naruto as a war or just treat him like a beast? Said Maze as she was glaring up to the heavens. That is why we are here. To tip the hands of fate back in our favor. Said Sukumo as the others just nodded their heads. For tonight many things were going to come to light and some things that belong in the dark would find their way to the light. Achiha District. Sasuke sat in the kitchen listened to his mother talk about something as he was looking over a scroll she had given him to read. Sasuke I want you to grow stronger than your foolish father and your brother you do not belong in their shadows. She told him making him look up from the scroll. Okay mom. But is bring this on tonight? Questioned Sasuke as he placed aside the clan law scroll. She sighed and looked over at her youngest. Your father might be doing something foolish that will damn this clan. If that happen and he fails I want you to be protected. If that happens, I want you to go to Naruto's family and have them take you in. She told her son. I'll do as you ordered, but father is always up to something and nothing ever comes of his plans or scams. I don't think this one will happen like all the others. Said Sasuke as he stood up and hugs his mother. Good night mother. Good night Sasuke. She told him as she kissed his forehead and went back to cleaning her kitchen. Waiting to see if her husband was going to carry out his new plan and if she would live through the night. It was already 11.59 pm. We moved tonight. Does everyone know who they will be killing? Asked Fugaku. All the men and several women nodded their heads to their clean leader. I am truly sorry about this Fugaku. But tonight the only ones on death door will be the ones here in this shrine. Came a dark male voice from the shadows of the shrine basement. Who's there? 
Show yourself, demanded Fugaku. Out stepped Sakumo in his true from. His silver locks glowed in the moonlight. Death has sent me to stop this fool plan of yours. He told the man. How are you even here, Sakumo? You're dead. Said Fugaku in a calm but fearful voice. Like I said. Death has ordered me here tonight to kill those of the Ichiha clan that plan to turn on their village. Said Sakumo as his eye began to glow and turn amber, and before them was now a werewolf. His hellhound stepped out of the shadows on each side of him as Trixie and Maze followed suit. Tonight the full moon would be bathed in blood. Said Maze as she licked her blade and they attacked. Muffed screams could be heard from the shrine. But no one came to see what was happening for they had been placed under a peaceful sleep. Toby stepped into the shadows of the shrine to see if the plan was underway. But what he found made him sick. Before him was nothing but blood and guts and several body parts being eaten by hell hounds. It is a pleasure you join us tonight Abito. Came a soft female voice. He turned to see a young girl seen next to the wall watching the hounds eat. What happened here and why are you calling me Abito? I am Madaracha. Drop the act Abito we know you didn't die that day during the third war. Came a deeper male voice from behind him. He turned to see a werewolf standing behind him throwing a hand to a hell hound. What the hell are you? He asked with fear in his voice. Just a ghost from the past that has come back to protect the future. Said Sakumo. Well kid it's time to die. Said Maze as she rushed Abito. But before she could kill him, we vanished into a black void. Bastard. Growled out Maze as she hit the wall with her blade. No matter we have time. He will be coming back and we will get him them. Said Trixie as she stood up and turned back into her child form. Let's go before someone finds us here. Said Maze as they vanish into the shadows as the basement door opens. There stood Itachi Ache, Who was planning to kill his father and his whole clan if need be to save his little brother and the other children from the faith of hatred. But the sight before him shock him. Quickly he rushed home to see if his mother was still alive. As he opened the back door, he found his mother in the kitchen putting the last of the dinner away. For she had grown tired of waiting for her good-for-nothing husband to come home. You're alive. Said Itachi with shock in his voice. She looked up at him. Huh? What are you talking about dear? She asked her son. Father and the others are all dead. There is nothing left of them but a few body parts and blood and a few guts. Said Itachi as he was growing paler and greener. So someone found out about their stupid plan and killed them. Good. She said as she turned away from her son and sat down. I know that isn't very kind of me. But I told your father that this wasn't going to end well for him and the others. Itachi looked at his mother with shock. You knew what father was planning all along and haven't told anyone? He asked her. She looked at him as if he was an annoying little child. I went to the Hokage and he told me he would talk to your father and the elders. But it appeared his talks went nowhere with that foolish man. She told her son. Itachi nodded his head dumbly. Well get some rest for tomorrow you and I will have to clean the shrine. She told her son as she rose and went to the stairs. Good night dear. She told him with a smile. Good night mother. Said Itachi. I wonder who I would have to thank for taking care of that asshole for me. She thought to herself. It was 6 a.m. and Naruto, Shikamaru, and Ino both stood in training ground 10, waiting for their new senseis. Maze and Trixie senseis will be here soon. They said they need to go get a lazy bump to do his job. Said Naruto as he grinned. They all knew they both women didn't like Kakashi, for he was a slacker that lived in the pass, and his poor team was going to pay for his weakness if he didn't get his head out of his ass. That's fine. It gives me a chance to get a little more sleep. Said Shikamaru as she laid back down next to a tree and fell quickly to sleep. Ino grinned at Naruto. You have a lazy girlfriend you know. She told her fellow blonde. Naruto blushed. She isn't lazy. He said as he turned away from the gossip princess of Konoha. So you're telling me she really is your girlfriend? Questioned Ino with a Chester cat grin on her face. Shikamaru woke up and looked over at her friend with a glare as Naruto was blushing even more. Aye aye. He trailed off as Trixie and Maze showed up. That's enough from you Ino. We are in the works for a marriage contract right now. Said Maze with an evil grin. That was enough for Naruto to pass out and Shikamaru to sit up and glare at Maze now. That isn't funny Maze sensei. Said Shikamaru. Maze grinned as she looked at her students as Trixie woke Naruto up with a bowl of Raymond. Alright you three. There is normally a test time to give you. But I know how strong you are and I know it would be pointless. So I say you pass and we start with what I want to train you in as well as we are being these lay mass D rank shore missions. The quicker we get those done the sooner we move up to a C rank mission. She told her students as Trixie nodded her head. Most likely I will be the one that will be on these D-rank mission with you, for Maze will get bored and try to do something stupid. So during those times she will be a T and I making trouble for Ibiki right next to Anko. Said Trixie as she smiled at her students. 
I am glad that we don't have to do the bell test that I read about in dad's notes that he did on his students and what his sensei did with him to see how we work as a team. Said Naruto as he gave a foxy grin. Both Shik and Ino looked over at their blonde hair teammate. You knew what test we might have to do? They asked him as one. Well yeah. It's normal for us to be tested on teamwork and the most basic of that test is the beller tracking and we are not a tracking team like what I think team 8 is and what team 7 might be. Said Naruto. Maze grinned. Well you are right to a point. Team 8 is going to be a tracking team with one heavy hitter on it. Team 7 is set up to be a frontline team with a tracker and maybe a medic, whatever that fangirl gets her head out of her ass and takes being a Kinoichi serious. She told her students. Then what are we going to be? Ask Ino not to sure if she wanted to know. We are going to be first response with interrogation and infiltration with a heavy hitter. Said Maze as she grinned at each of her little genin. So we will be getting a T and I training at genin level. Questioned Shikamaru as she sighed. Troublesome. Yes, that training will be in one week. During that week Anko will be joining us as well as Ibiki, for he wanted to see if Ino will show any promise in taking over her father's job in the future. Said Maze as she smirked. Ino smirked. I would love to take over daddy's job, but I'm having so much fun learning poisons that I don't know if I want to work in T&I. She told them. Well you know in T&I they allow you to test out all your poisons on the prisoners that are on death row, right? Questioned Trixie as she knew Ino would fall for the bait. Ino's eyes widen. You're joking right? She asked. Nope. Why do you think Anko loves it there so much? Said Maze with a devilish grin. Then I guess it wouldn't be too bad in looking into maybe taking over daddy's job in the future. Said Ino as she was now smirking at Maze. Okay let's see how we want to get started. We can take D ranks at the start of the day or begin with training. For I believe if we get the training done first, we could be doing D ranks after lunch and Maze can be off making Ibiki's life a little bit sunnier said Trixie as she is smiling at her longtime friend. I say we bring with morning training for the cooler mornings would make it easier on us, and in the afternoon, we can do those chores that Maze doesn't want anything to do with, said Naruto as he was smiling. Troublesome. We are going to be sore before we even get to our missions in the afternoon, said Shikamaru as she is glaring at Naruto. Well I believe after we finish with mission we return to our compound and see what other skill you girls would like to pick up. We have already had Naruto learning sealing and kinjutsu and others weapons for I want him very well rounded. Said Maze as she studied Ino and Shikamaru as they both just stood there thinking. Like I have told you in the past in our group training from the academy. I need to learn some more jutsus and other fighting styles for my clan style leaves me defenseless when I use it. Said Ino as she stood there thinking more. That is something we can work on in the morning and in the evening. For we want you all to be well rounded. Said Trixie as she was smiling at the blonde hair girl. I need to build up my chakra reserves and stamina for my family jutsu does take a lot out of me when I try to hold someone down like Naruto who has a lot of chakra. Said Shikamaru as she was still thinking. Also I need more jutsu and fighting styles and weapons to rely on as well for once I am out of chakra, I'm pretty much screwed and I don't want to be seen as weak. Said Shikamaru as she looked a little annoyed at the idea of coming across as weak. Those are good things to point out and good things to know about yourselves and these are things we will be working on. Also I have a couple of fools seeing if they could try down a couple extra summoning scrolls while they are out on missions. For I want to make my team well rounded and if I can have you three surpass the sin in the better. Said Maze as a wicked grin crept across her face. She might not like the angels too much, but at times they could be useful to her. Alright kids give us 10 laps around the training field, for we will start off light today, but by the end of the week, I want you all to be able to run 25 laps, and it will go up each week by 5 laps, and after that we will work on chakra control by tree walking or water walking. Said May she was now throwing kunai at the genin for not running. You know you don't have to throw kunai at them. Said Trixie as she looks over at Maze. I know but it is more fun this way. Said Maze with a grin. So they were off as they began their lives as shinobi even though they are at the bottom. They would soon move up for nothing was going to stop them, and they would be damned if anyone gets in their way of becoming legends of their own rights. The angels had returned with four summoning scrolls they had found on their missions outside of the village. Naruto was sitting outside with Kurama working with the fox summons, as a black and white fox kits ran around the lord of all the bijus and fox summons. Naruto looks up to see the three angels to walk into the courtyard. Hey everyone. He called out with a huge grin. Aminadiel smiled at his nephew as Azrael waved at him, and Uriel just nodded his head to the boy. How has your training been coming along Naruto? Asked Aminadiel as he walked up to his nephew. It has been going well. It has sucked that the old man has been sending you three out of the village a lot. Sakumo has been doing his best to train me and my angelic powers along with Kurama here. Said Naruto as he looked over at Kurama who was still playing with the kits. 
What does a werewolf and a fox know about angelic powers? Scuffed Uriel as he was growing annoyed with playing with these humans. He'd rather be back in Silver City. You would be surprised what one learns though out the years. Said Karama as he looks up at Uriel as he didn't care very much for this angel. He would rather rip him to pieces send him back to Silver City in a pretty little box. Uriel glares at him as he didn't care much for the biju. He blamed the fox for his troublesome brother's death. Also the creature was unnatural to his world. It wasn't demon and it wasn't angelic. It was a creature created of pure energy and it could change their father. That is enough out of you Uriel. Came Maze's voice from behind the three. They turned to see a pissed off raven hair woman. She wasn't in the mood for a pissing contest with this angel and the biju. If you do not like it here. Why don't you return back to Silver City and send someone else that could aid us better? She told him. I would if I was allowed. Growled out Uriel as he turned away and left the group. Amanadia looks to Naruto. Please forgive him. The mission went south and he almost lost his wings against an Iwa ninja. He told his nephew. Naruto just smiles. It's alright. He is always like this when you guys get back from a mission. I have told the old man to make him a desk ninja for Uncle Uriel isn't a field ninja anymore. He is too old to be playing with the young pups. He told the older man before him. Amanadiel smiled at the boy. Very well spoken. There are times we angels do need to take time away from field work and just take it easy and train to rebuild out strength and I believe it is his time once more. He said. Azra looked up to the heavens. Father it might be time to recall my brother. I don't things will end well for him here. She silently prayed to the heavens. Silver City. God watched over his children and his grandson. He heard his daughter's prayer. He could agree with her. Uriel has been pulling himself away from everyone and hadn't been wanting to spend as much time with Naruto anymore. Even when missions would come up, he didn't want to take part. He did all what he needed to do just to make it by and made the other two carry all the weight of all the missions they had been taking. Uriel should return back to Silver City. He doesn't care at all to train Naruto. I think Amanadiel and Azrael are doing well on their own with training the boy. I do not need Lucifer coming for his brother. For if anything happens to his son and Uriel hadn't done nothing to save the boy. It will not end well for him. So tonight. Send him a message and have him return. Ordered God to a random angel as they rushed away to follow their orders and make a scroll for the hookage of Uriel passing away in his sleep and the family taking care of the body already. Hell. Lucifer had been watching what has been going on with his son and saw his brother just not wanting to be around. This angered him. Hanoha. Maze looks at her ex-lover Amanadiel. What summons have you found? She asked him as they all walked into the house as the kids had returned home to their mother. We have found the dire wolves, tigers, panthers, and oddly enough a very old scroll for hellhounds. Said Azrael as she looked at the others. Naruto should sign the wolves and hellhounds contracts. Said Kurama. This had all eyes on him as they looked at him. Why? Asked Naruto as he was wondering. I already have the fox summons contract. He tells Kurama. Kurama looks at him. Because the villagers will freak out if you ever have to summon me on a boss fight inside or outside of the village walls. He tells the boy. Not many people really like me for what happened last time. He tell him. Naruto nodded his head. He understood where Kurama was coming from. He would just use the fox summons mostly do recon and other things and will train with the other two summon contracts that he was told to sign as Kurama was the boss summons he didn't need to ask if it was alright. Amanadiel pulls out the two scrolls and gives them to his nephew. I hope they sever you well nephew. Naruto nodded his head and unrolled both scrolls and bit his thumb and signed both summons. He ran thought the hand signs and shouted out for both summons. Dire wolves. Hell hounds. He yelled as there was two large puffs of smoke before him. There before him was the three-headed hellhound Cerberus and Chaos of the dire wolf pack. Both the boss summons of each summons. Who summons me? Asked one of the three heads of Cerberus as his crimson eyes looks around as Naruto stands before him strong and tall. Who has the gall to summon me? Asked Chaos as his amber eyes fall on the blondy hair before him and Cerberus. I do. Said Naruto as he looks at them both. Hirama takes his nine tails form as he stands behind Naruto. Just in case he needs to fight for the boy's life against these two. A human child has summoned us. Scuffed Chaos as he was now laughing. Do not laugh. I am the son of Lucifer Morningstar and Kashina Yuzumaki. I am Naruto Namaka's Yuzumaki Morningstar. Said Naruto as his wings came out of his back as he was claiming his birthright. Cerberus looked at a boy with shock written on all three of his heads. So Morningstar did have a son after all. He questioned as he looks at Kurama that stood behind the boy. So what is he your master now? No, he isn't my master. I am sealed within him. For the humans fear what they do not understand Cerberus. So do not mock me. For it could easily be you or one of your children in my place. Said Kurama as his gaze turns to chaos. 
that goes to you as well old friend. Both Ba Summons looked at Karama with understand. For they had gone through their own time periods where people hunted and feared them. I see you also hold the Kitsune Summons. So why do you sign with us both? Questioned Chaos as he wanted to know. I was the one to tell him to sign both those summoning scrolls. For he wouldn't be able to use my summons within these village walls. So having powerful summons as you both will make up for when he isn't able to call for me. Said Karama as he knew this always pissed the two off. It to the two of them to take down his sister the two-tailed cat and they stood to chance of taking him down. Chaos glared at Karama for his little shot at immense Cerberus. What makes you think we will allow this child here to be our summoner? Questioned Chaos. Naruto smirked at this. For Cerberus already works closely with my father and my uncle Sakumo Haddock. He told the two bosses as Cerberus stiffen at this little bit of information. So he is your uncle. I thought he was a lazy drunk that was go for nothing but killing and screwing several of my female hellhounds. Growled out Cerberus as Sakumo appeared from the shadows. You don't have to be rude about it and I am only with the former witch Ruby. The others I will not lay with for I respect Ruby too much. Said Sakumo as he was grinning at the large three-headed hellhounds before him. More like an afraid before she cut the balls off her last lover for laying with another. Said Cerberus as he saw Sakumo shift a little. That is enough. We are here about the kit. Not about who is fucking who. Growled out Karama as the house shook from his power alone. He was showing them who was the boss and king of all demons and boss of all Kitsune summons. I do not have the time for you three fools to waste. You will allow the kit here to be your summons. I will know if you refuse to allow him to summon you and I will pay you a little visit. Even if that means bring the kit to your summoning realm, I will stomp you into the ground like I have for centuries and prove my power once more over the two of you and anyone else who has the gall to face me on the field of battle. He growled out as the flames of hell licked at his open mouth and his paws. He wasn't playing with the two of them and he will train Naruto to have his kind of power. But he will make sure the boy still holds his heart of gold for he was the purest soul he had ever felt in his life. Something that was too good for this world. But who was he to make the choose? Both Chaos and Cerberus took a step back from the Lord of all demon and bowed their heads in fear and respect. Yes, my lord as you request. They said as one. This isn't right. I should have them coming to aid me out of fear and respect for you Uncle Karama. Said Naruto as he was feeling sad and uneasy about this all. Karama looks to the boy knowing his pure heart was hurting him watching these two being forced into his service. Then what do you want to do about it kid? He questioned. Naruto looked at Karama and then back at the other two. A small smile graced his lips as he walked up to the two boss summons. He held out his hand to the two of them. Hi I'm Naruto. We got off on the wrong foot and I just want to be your friend. I don't want you fear me because of Karama or come to my aid at his request or demand. I want you to help me because we are friends. He told the two before him. This shocked the two before him. You mortal child want us as your friends? Questioned Cerberus as his three heads looked at the boy as he was up to some kind of trick. They couldn't find anything. They couldn't fell and negative energy or that he was lying to them. He was being honest to them. For the first time in a long time. A mortal had told them the truth. Why would you want to befriend us? Are you not scared of us? Asked Chaos as he watched the boy closely. No. I'm not. Said Naruto as he shook his head at the dire wolf boss. I have been around Karama and Maze all my life, as well as the crazy snake Lady Anko. I'm not scared of you. Once you had giant snakes chasing you it takes a lot to scare you. He told them. Chaos smirked. He has heard about how Anko of the snake summons is very playful with her summons and loves having them scare and play with people all the time. I see. Was all he said as he turned to look at Cerberus. Cerberus met his gaze and slowly nodded his heads. We will give you this chance to prove you are different from the humans we have trusted in the past. But if you ever betray this trust. Not even Karama can't save you from us. He told the boy. That sounds fair. Said Naruto as he nodded in agreement. The kid will surprise you was all the Karama said as he watched the two friends vanish in a poof of smoke. He just hoped that the power he let loose didn't scare the shit out of the villagers. If it did on well, they could suck it. In the morning you will give your mate the panther summons and the other blondie the tiger summons. I had wished they had found something that would have been poisonous, but baggers can't be choosers. He said as Naruto nodded his head. He had been a long night for the boy. He was ready to turn in. His nerves were on edge from face two of the scariest summons he had ever seen in his life. With that said he had passed out before everyone. Karama just chuckled as he picked up his kit and took him to his room to get some rest. He needed it after tonight. That night Michael had left heaven with only one mission in mind. It was rare for the archangel to even leave heaven these days as he didn't want anything to do with anything going on around him. He had lost his passion and light for fighting. Leaving everything to his siblings to handle. But oddly enough he had gone to his father. Flashback. 
Father I wish to be the one to go and fetch Uriel. Said Michael as he looked up at his father. God looked down at his depressed son. If that is what you wish to do. Then so be it my son. Said God as he smiled at him. Michael nodded his head and took the scrolls form the angel that was to head to earth to pick up Uriel. End of flashback. Michael stood before the front door of the door as Maze could feel a strong angelic power coming from the front door. Who the hell is here now? She grumbled as the others looked over at her a little puzzled. What's wrong Auntie Maze? Asked Naruto as he was confused. She looks over at him. Why don't you go answer the door and you will find out. She told him as Naruto stood up and walked over to the front door. As he opened the door there before him was a man with golden blonde hair and violet eyes. Michael looked a little shocked when he saw his nephew for the very first time. If he didn't know any better, he could be looking a younger version of himself. But Lucifer was his twin brother and it wouldn't be shocking for Naruto to look like him. Hey who are you? Asked Naruto as he just looked at the man before him. Trixie getting a little worried she walks over to the front door to see who Naruto is talking to. Michael clears his throat. I am Archangel Michael and I'll here to bring back Uriel on father's request. Said the now named Michael as Trixie looked surprised at the man at the door. Alright. Come in Uncle Michael. Said Naruto as he stepped aside. Hearing the name the boy said all the angels and demons in the house had gathered in the living room as Uriel was glaring at the angel that walked into the house. What are you doing here Michael? Asked Uriel as he didn't have time for silly games. Michael narrowed his eyes at his brother's blatant disrespect for him. I am here to drag your lazy butt back to heaven before Lucifer breaks out of hell and tries killing you once more. He told his younger brother as he wasn't in the mood for his BS. Uriel narrowed his eyes at him. On whose orders? He questioned as he wanted to know who ordered this. Father. He has been watching you and how you've been negating your duties here. It is best you return and someone or no one replace you here in the house. Father has already made up a scroll for the others to give to the Hokage. Stating you had passed away in your sleep from a heart attack and they had already taken care of your body. Said Michael as he had a little joy watching the anger in his younger brother's eyes. Uriel smirked. I am glad I'm leaving this hellhole. I am not even allowed to carry out my mission with that damn Hokage always sending us out of the village for bullshit missions. He growled out as he didn't want to play ninja anymore and just wanted to go back to Silver City and sleep and be a lazy bastard. Wow I didn't know you felt this way. Said Naruto as he looked sad and began to walk out of the living room as he had been made to feel like he was nothing but a burden to his uncle. All in the room looked at Uriel with narrow eyes as they glared at the man for how he left his nephew feeling. He just rolled his eyes at this. It is best he toughens up and learns now not everyone will do everything for him. He growled out. But before Kurama could move across the living room and kill the man before him. Michael punched Uriel breaking his nose and began to stomp him into the ground, leaving the angel a broken bloody mess on the ground. You will learn to bite your tongue. This will be the very last time in a long time you will ever see Naruto and how you leave here tonight. He will know that you had never loved or cared for him but saw him a waste of your time and a bartend that was forced upon you. Growled out Michael as Uriel vanished in a silver light. He had been dragged back to Silver City to now answer to his father for his actions and behavior. For if Lucifer had seen this. There was nothing their father could do to stop the man from coming and killing Uriel. Always a watchful and caring father Lucifer had seen it all along with Kashina. They both will be heading to Silver City to deal with Uriel. Michael sighed. He should have never come here. I knew he would be doing this sooner or later. He did last longer than anyone would have though he would have. He said as he shook his head in disappointment. You should have allowed me to kill him. Growled out Karama as he could feel how sad and heartbroken his kit was about this all. Michael looked over at the redeed. No. For I would have killed you. He said with a cold tone. Karama smirked. You can't kill me. For you would have killed Lucifer's son and Lucifer would have broken out of hell and appeared here and killed you before you could have done anything. He told the archangel before him. Michael frowned as it was true Lucifer had changed since he had become a father and with his crimson hair lover by his side. The ex-archangel was much more powerful than he was at this time. H.N. Was all he said as Karama smirked. I see where the Acha has get that from. Said Maze with a dark smirk. Michael glared at the woman as he had met the very few lucky Achihas that made it to heaven and he would have rather sent them to hell for their egos and white them to no end. Do not compare me to those monkeys. He growled out. Someone is sounding like the old morning star. Said Azrael as she looked away quickly and hid behind Maze. Anyways Uriel is now gone. Why are you still here Michael? Asked Maze as she wanted to know. Aminadiel nodded his head to this question. Yes, father. It is rare for you to even Silver City in this day and age. Why are you still lingering here on earth with us? He wanted to know. Michael looked at them. For you are not training the boy in his angelic power and it is not sitting well with me. He told them. 
This shocked them all as Michael was one that hasn't wanted nothing to do with Lucifer since his fall from grace. So what are you going to stay here for the time being and take over his training? Ask Azrael as she wanted to know what was going through her brother's mind. Yes. For now I will stay. But I will not become a shinobi of this village, for I will not answer to anyone but our father. Said Michael as they just nodded their heads at him. Garama just sighed. He was stuck with a stick in the mud for the time being and he didn't want to deal with him whatsoever. He would give anything to just have Lucifer return and take over and deal with all these fools. The demons had shown more heart to his kid than the fool Uriel and the other two angels have done their best. So he doesn't hold nothing against them as he knew they'd been taking mission, so the Hokage would leave him alone. For they feared to tell the old monkey that the redeed they all had been talking to be the Kayubi. They would have a heart attack. But they would have to tell him soon for Naruto was now going to go on missions and the old man was going to state with him once more. Damn it all to hell. For now just leave the kid alone. He needs to rest. He has to meet his mate and his other teammate to teach them how to use their summons. After he returns from training and missions you may begin your training with him. Said Kurama as he was being the protective brother father to his kid. Very well. Said Michael as he looked at Aminadiel. So meet to Uriel's old room. He ordered as the other quickly rose and showed him to his new room. Next day. Naruto quickly ran to the training ground 10. He wanted to be there early for they would be working with Trixie today, as Maze was needed in T&I for Anko, and Ibiki had a tough cookie to break and they needed her skills for this one. Sitting under a tree was Ino and Shikamaru as they both just chat. Well more Ino chatting as Shikamaru was trying to take a nap as she was bored and tried. Hey. Said Naruto as he appeared before the two of them. They both looked up at him. Hey, Naruto Narukun. Said both Ino and Shikamaru. He grinned at both girls. I go a gift for the two of you. He told them as he unsealed both summoning scrolls from his left forearm. One scroll had a black strap on it and with a picture of a large black cat of some kind as the other had an orange and black strap with a what looked like a tiger on it. Ino perked up at this. You got a something. She asked him as she was excited at getting a gift of some kind. Shika she just raised an eyebrow to this. What did you get us? She asked him as she was wondering what he got them. He grinned at them. Well. My auntie Azrael and uncle Aminadiel found some summoning scrolls and I wanted you two to have personal summons. He told them. They looked at him wide-eyed. Are you sure about that? Asked Eno as she was shocked at this. Yeah. Summons are very rare and hard to find and why are you so willing to give them away? Asked Shika as she couldn't believe what she was hearing. I want you to be stronger. As it is, I already have three summoning contracts and my family didn't want them and if I just stored them in my family library, they are just going to get dusty. So why not give them to my friend and my girlfriend? Said Naruto as he was grinning again. You have three summons. Asked Shika as she was now wondering what contracts he held. Yeah. One of them I can't use in the village for the villagers will have a heart attack. Well I think they would have a heart attack from all three of my summons. If you really do think about it. Use Naruto as he was now thinking as he held the two scrolls for the girls in his hands. Okay. Said Ino as she was even wondering the same thing as her best friend. But that is besides the fact. You will meet two of my summons as we train with your summons. Said Naruto as he looked down at each scroll. Shika I want you to have the panther summons as they are silent stalkers and hunt from the shadows. He said as he looked over at Ino. Ino I want you to have the tiger summons as they are strong and beautiful like you. He said with a cheesy grin on his face as he watched her blush and Shika glare at him. Each girl took a scroll and looked at it and back at him waiting for him to explain what to do next. Alright open the scroll and write your name and blood and then put your handprint in blood. But make sure you use your hand that will be mainly for summoning. When you're done with it I'll show you the hand signs and then once you have them down, you will push as much chakra as you can into summoning them and then talk to whoever comes and let them know you are their new summoner. But sometimes come summons will have you do a test. So be ready for anything. Said Naruto as both girls nodded their heads to him. After doing as he told them he had shown them the hand signs and after 30 minutes they had pushed as much chakra they could into summoning and with two large poofs of smoke appeared the boss summons. Who summons me? Question a large panther with a scare of its left eye. Who has found my scroll? Question a large white tiger. We do. Said Shikamaru and Ino as one. Both Ba summons look at the girls before them. Who summons Shiba of the panthers? Asked the now named Shiba. I do Shikamaru Nara. Said Shikamaru as she stood tall and looked the summons in the eyes as she was going to back down. The little frond believes she is strong enough to call upon one like myself. Laughed Shiba. Narrowing her eyes Shikamaru glares at the large cat before her. I may be a fawn right now. But soon I will be a strong doe that will be the head of my clan. She said in a strong voice. 
She had lost all laziness that normally laced her voice as she walked up to the panther boss and stared her down. Shiba smirked at the girl. Very good cub. I will allow you to summon us. But be warned, if you cross us or betray us. There will be hell to pay and your mate there and his summons will not be able to save you. Kurama will be damned. She said as she hissed Kurama's name at Naruto as she glared at him. Hey, I never said I was going to call him for anything. Whined Naruto as he glared back at the large panther before him. She smirks at him. I know cub, but that bastard lurks in the shadows and knowing him he will do all in his power to have his way. She told him as Kurama jumped down and glared at her. The girls look at Naruto's uncle a little puzzled as he glares at the panther boss. Damn you Shiba. The kid's mate and friend were not to know of me just yet. He growled out as his eyes flashed crimson and an aura of a nine-tailed fox appeared around him. It appears you never change Kurama. Said the tiger boss as he narrows his yellow eyes at the man. Kurama looks at him and smirks. Still sore about losing to me. Well I should be asking are you still sore about losing to my baby brother the one tail. He told the tiger. The tiger narrowed his eyes even more. Shukaku just got luck. He growled out. Ino and Shika just watched this man piss off two summons as larger as a mountain without any fear whatsoever. The tiger turns away from Kurama and looks at Ino and looks the girl over. So little flower. Do you believe you are strong enough to summon us tigers? He asked her. Ino glared at him bowling her hands into fist. Don't call me that. My name is Ino Yamanaka. Yes I do believe I am strong enough to be your summoner. She told him as she stood strong against the tiger that could just eat her in just one bite. A child of the mind walking clan. Interesting. Not many of your clan are able to handle summons for they are too weak. Said the tiger as he grinned as he was pushing any button on her he could. My clan might not be the strongest. But we make it up in heart and strong will to never give up and leave our friends and commands behind. I will do all I can to stand on equal grounds as my teammates and be the future clan head of my clan one day. Said Eno with fire in her eyes. The tiger smirked. He had light the fire he was hoping to see in her. Very well. I Yure will allow you to summon my clan. Said the now named Yure. Eno bowed to him. Which shocked the large tiger summons. Thank you. I will do all I am able to. To make you and my clan proud of me. She told him. Both summons looked at Kumara. You old bastard. We will have a rematch once again someday. Said Yurei as he vanished in a cloud of smoke. You still owe me dinner Kurama. Said Shiba as she winked at him and vanished as well. Kurama just grumbled to himself as he was getting ready to leave the kids. Wait. What did those two mean about you Kurama sensei? Asked Shika as she looked at her part time sensei. He looked over at her as he let out a sigh. Come over tonight and I will tell you. But you will not be able to repeat what I tell you. For it is classified information and it has a death sentence attached to it. He told both girls as they paled looking at him with shock written across their face. With that he vanished in a swirl of flames. Naruto smiled at the both of them. I can't wait until we begin training with our summons. For Uncle Kurama said if the summons allows it, we can become sages. Like how Jureya of the Senan is the toad sage. He said with excitement in his voice. Both girls just nodded their heads as they didn't even think that far ahead as their friend boyfriend has already for them. Trixie had come walking up on her team as she saw Kurama leave the group. Hey guys. She called out as they all turned around to look at her. Good morning Trixie sensei. Said Ino and Shika as one as Naruto just grinned at his aunt and waved at her. She smiled back at them. So what did I miss for Kurama to leave in a ball of flames like that? She asked them. Naruto smiled sheepishly. Let's just say the girl summons just outed him and he wants to meet with the girls tonight to tell him our little secret. He said as he looked a little nervous about that. Trixie just nodded her head. Well it's going to be very interesting. Was all she said as she turned and looked at the others as they looked a little confused at her. For now don't worry about it. You both will find out soon enough. She told them as she just waved them off. The girls just nodded their heads to this as they didn't know what to think about this. Michael stood off in the shadows up in a tree just watching his nephew talk with the two girls and watch the summons as well. Well he has chosen a strong female. But will she be able to handle the fact he is the son of the devil? He thought to himself as Kurama appeared before him. You know it isn't right be to a stalker. Said Kurama with a smirk on his face. Michael narrows his violet eyes at him. I am watching the boy. I want to know how much work I have before me. He growled out as he didn't like speaking with the biju. You don't have too much work before you. For I have done my best to teach him about his angelic powers when the others are away and when they return, they work with him beside that lazy bastard. Growled out Kurama. Michael scuffed at this. Like a demon like yourself knows anything. I know more than you think little archangel. Said Kurama with a smirk as he jumped from the branch he was standing on as Michael had swung his flaming holy sword at him. Keep it up little archangel. Lucifer will be here before you know it. 
For nothing will happen to his son or myself. For our lives are linked. Even though your father had changed the ceiling a little. Said Kurama as he vanished once more. He had to meet the others at the Hokage Tower to have a nice long talk with the old man. Michael growled to himself. Damn beast. His eyes moved back to Naruto as the boy was jumping away from one of Trixie's attacks, as his wings appear behind his back. Beautiful black and white feathers mixed into his wings. Michael looked on in shock. The boy was pure, but he also gotten his father's black wings from when he had fallen. Naruto smirked as he stayed in the air longer than normal before his wings faded once more and he went falling back to the earth below him. Ouch. He cried as he was rubbing his back and his head as he fell hitting his head on a stone and his back on a tree. I hate it that I can't keep them out too long. He whined to Trixie. It's fine Naruto-chan. We will get you better trained now that your uncle Michael is here. I wish I would have listened better during my training with my wings. Said Trixie as she looked away sheepishly. A pure soul wishing to live in hell with all the demons and fallen. Many in Silver City had looked at her for wanting that path in her life. Even her mother was shocked for her daughter wanting to stay close to Lucifer and Maze. That is an amazing bloodline Naruto. Said Eno as she loved looking at his wings. Naruto blushes. Thanks Eno. He said sheepishly as he rubs his hand behind his head as he looks away. Shikamaru just studies the two as his family always said weird things and always seemed to be different from the others in the village or even different from a normal human in many ways and with Naruto having this strange bloodline limit, it always made her wonder what all her boyfriend was hiding from everyone. No matter what she wouldn't judge him or treat him any different. She just wanted to know what to expect from him. Okage Tower. Hirama appeared next to Sakumo and Amanadiel. Are you two ready to get this over with? He asked the two next to him. It's best to do this now. If not, it will be troublesome in the future. Said Sakumo as he was channeling his inner Nara at the moment. But the nod the three men walked into the Hokage Tower with the missions they each had. Kurama figured he would handle his last, as it would surely give the old monkey a heart attack. They slowly made their way up the long stairway to the top floor where the Hokage's office was. Each man lost in their own thoughts about what was about to happen. Slowly but surely, they had made it to the old man's office and knocked on the door. Come in. Was heard on the other side of the door. They opened the door and walked in as they saw the old man doing his paperwork and was alone as his Anbu had left the office. As they feared two of the three men in the trio before their hokage. Ah Sakumo, Kurama and Amanadiel what do I owe the pleasure of your visit this fine morning? Asked Saratobi as he smiled at each of them and watched his Anbu run like scared little girls. This sad. They are the elite and they run from two of the three before me. He thought to himself as he let out a mental sigh to this little detail. Amanadiel stepped forth with a scroll in his hand. I have grave news. But Uriel had passed away last night of a heart attack and we had always handled his body and cremated it. He told the old man before him giving him the scroll. Everything is in the scroll. He told him. Tsuritobi nodded his head. I see. I am truly sorry for the lost in your family. He did appear not to be feeling well last night when you three returned from your mission. He told Amanadiel. Amanadiel just nodded his head to this. As he didn't want to say any more. Tsukumo stepped forth. I handled the little issue you were having with the Ichiha clan. All those who wanted to rise against the village have been turned to Hellhound Chow. He said with his eyes flashing amber at the thought of all those screams. Tsuritobi paled at this. I didn't know you knew anything about what was happening with them. He said with a hint of fear in his voice. Tsukumo smirked. I have a better spy network than Jurea's and I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty to protect those I care for. He said as the old man knew he was talking about Naruto and he knew that they would do anything for the boy. Hirama smirked. What I am about to tell you will shock you. So you best not have a heart attack on me you old monkey. He told the elderly leader. Tsuritobi arched an eyebrow to this as he wanted to know what the hell was happening. What are you talking about Kurama-kun? He asked. Hirama took a seat before the elderly old man. There is a reason I have not taken missions from the village and I'm always close to Naruto. Haven't you ever wondered why I was always close to the boy? He asked. Well yes I have wondered that many times and I have asked the others and they all told me to ask you for you're the only one with the answers I need. Said Saratobi as he was finally getting one answer to the many mysteries that surround the Namika's Uzumaki clans. Well Naruto is my Jinchiriki. I was sealed within Naruto that night and I was told not to tell you or anyone for Minato and Kishina wanted the child to have a normal life and for no one to know the secret that the boy had the nine tails sealed within him. But my seal is special as it allows me out of him for, I was ordered by Kishina and Minato to raise the boy and make sure he had a good life. Said Kurama as he watched the old man before him. Saratobi's eyes wide in shock and fear for the man before him was the beast that destroyed this village so many years ago. But how? Was all he could ask. 
The higher power get in the way and stop the Shinigami for taking Minato's soul, and my soul was changed to allow me out to raise the boy. For the higher power said if the boy was outed as the jailer of the Nine Tails, the villagers would do all in their power to kill him and hurt him any chance they could get. This was the only things we could do at the time. For the child is very special, and we couldn't allow him to be raised hated and abused. Said Kurama as he knew the old man wanted to say that wouldn't happen. That wouldn't have happened. The villagers would have honored any wishes of Minato. He told Kurama. Kurama just scuffed. Tell me how the other villages treat my siblings sealed in the other human. He asked the old man. Saratobi opened his mouth to speak, but quickly closed it as he knew that what Kurama was saying was true. Naruto would have been treated badly and would have never been cared for or even have friends as he has now. He wouldn't have had a normal childhood, and the elders would have demanded that the boy would have been trained as a weapon, as how they wanted to do that to Kishina, once they learned of her being the holder of the Nine Tails. He let out a defeated sigh. You are right. Said Suratobi as he looked away with shame written across his face. But who all knows about you being sealed in the boy? He asked as he wanted to know. Garama just smirked. Just his family and soon his mate and other teammate. He told the old man before him. Suratobi nodded his head. Just make sure the girls know that it is important for them to keep this secret. For we do not need it coming out as his life would change and there would be a massive uprising with the villagers demanding him to be punished or worst. He told Kurama and the other two. You think I don't know that you old fool. I know better than any of you monkeys how you monkeys turn on each other over the littlest of things and this would be the stone that would destroy this village for I would do everything in my power to protect my kid and I will kill anyone and everyone who tries to hurt him or kill him. Said Kurama as Sakumo nodded his head as Amanadiel also agreed with the two other men. But the heavy sigh as it appeared Saratobi aged another 50 years just now. Anything else you want to tell me? He asked them. Kurama and Sakumo just smirked. Not now. Maybe later. Said Sakumo as he stood up and walked back to the office door. But the nodded they left the office and left an old man wondering what the hell was going on in his village that he didn't know about it. The Chiha district. Itachi along with his mother cleaned up the shrine as they didn't want anyone to see what had happened there. The cover story they came up with was it was a mass suicide and they would handle it as they didn't want to scar anyone from the sight that was left behind those who lost their mind last night. Naruto and Team 10. It was the end of the day and all of Team 10 walked back to Naruto's house so they could get some answers from Kurama about the summons freaking out about him and to have dinner with the boy as Aminadiel was making dinner tonight and it was going to grill for them. So please promise you will not freak out and also you can not tell anyone about this. If Kurama chooses to later on. We can tell your parents but for now. It is something that must stay with us. Said Naruto as he was very nervous as he was scared to lose his best friends and girlfriend over this huge little secret about himself. Don't worry Naruto. We trust you and I don't think there is anything you can tell us that will shock us anymore. Said Ino as she smiled at him. Shikamaru took his hand into hers and smiled at him. It will be fine you troublesome blonde. She told him with a smile on her face. I just hope so. Said Naruto as he opened the gate leading the girls into his clan lands as they walked up the house. Their standing there waiting for him to return was Michael as he was glaring at the girls right next to him. Hurry up. We have training to do and I will not be wasting my time here. I do want to return to Silver City soon. Said Michael as he was straight to business. Okay Uncle Michael. Said Naruto as he wasn't too happy, he wouldn't be with the girls when Kurama drops the bomb. Kurama appeared next to Michael. Still an asshole. He said as he looks at the girls. Let's go to the backyard and watch them and we can talk there. He told the two girls before him. They both nodded their heads as they followed after Naruto as his bossy uncle. Michael stood across from Naruto. All right boy focus and make your wings appear. He ordered. Naruto nodded his head and did as he was told. Garama looked at the girls as they sat under a large old oak tree. Well I know you two are wonder why I know those two boss summons. He asked them. Well yeah. They talk like you are one of the men have fought them on even ground. Said Ino as she was trying to figure this out. Shikamaru just studied the red head before her. Naruto said something about a summons he had that the village would have a heart attack about if they ever seen it in the village walls. She said. Yes. Said Kurama as he watched the little Nara try to figure it out. The only summons that I could think about. That would have the villagers panicking would be a Kitsune summons. Is that the summons you are tied to? Asked Shikamaru. Kurama grinned as he looked at the raven hair girl before him. That I am. For I am the boss summons for them. For I am the Kayubi no Yoki as you humans call me. But I am also called the Kayubi no Kitsune as I am the nine-tailed Biju that was forced to attack the village on the night that my kit was born. He told the two before him. He knows and Shikamaru's eyes widen as they are sitting across a man that claims to be the strongest of all the tailed Bijus. But how? Asked Ino as Shika was thinking. 
there is a special seal on my kit that allows me out of him to take care of him. For his parents made me promise nothing bad will happen to him, and the others have been covering my ass for so long to keep me off of missions, as the damn elders wanted to send me out of the village to get their hands on my kit and do Kami knows what to him. But they didn't know about me being sealed within him. Your Hokage just found out today as well. For I would be vanishing from the village once your team takes missions outside the village walls, and the others will not be able to cover for me then. Said Kurama. So that night you attack. Someone had forced you? Asked Shikamaru as she was trying to study him. Yes. I was made into a puppet by some damn Achiha that is Rouge. At the time. The only Rouge Achiha from this village is Madara, and he should be long dead. But things don't always go the way we think. But this Achiha did have some of that man's chakra in him. But it wasn't a true Madara but a puppet for the bastard as well. Said Kurama as the girl seemed to understand where he was coming from. Alright. It isn't your fault nor is it Naruto's. You both were just forced into things at the time out of your power. As he was a newborn and you under the control of an Achiha. Said Shikamaru as she wrapped her mind around it all. I'm not going to treat Naruto any different for I do see you two as your own two beings. She said. Hirama grinned and nodded his head. I always liked you and you're good for my kid. He said as he looked at Ino. Naruto is Naruto, and your Kurama are pain in the ass part-time sensei that loves making our lives a living hell in training. Said Ino as she just smirked as this wasn't the worst thing she had ever heard. The worst was when the rumor began about Sasuke being gay. Which she is still wondering about and about him really, really liking Naruto. But well, I'm glad you two took it better than the kid thought you were going to take it. For he feared that you would throw him away and fear him for having me within him. Said Kurama as he was proud of his kid's friends. Troublesome. Why would we do that? We grow up with him and you always around, and you have protected us from a few bastards that tried attacking us at the part before any of the damn Ichiha police showed their lazy asses up. Said Shikamaru as she wouldn't turn her back on him now. Hirama nodded his head and they watch as Michael throw Naruto around like a rag doll around the training ground. The Archangel wasn't holding his punches and was putting the boy though his own version of Hell Boot Camp. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.